First of all, what production does he do on this channel? You don't have intros. You don't have a outro. I do have an intro. Your, your thumbnails I look do like have you an got, intro. Your thumbnails look like you, you just haven't seen my intro. What is? <laughs> what wow. the fuck was that? Man, don't you just hate them all? Well, if you happen to be a creative working in Hollywood today, then the answer is probably yes. Either because you genuinely believe it, or because- Because that's how men generally act around each other. What's going on with you? What are you talking about? Now take a look at men in mainstream movies today. You sound insane. If it's meant to be a death blow- I told you I don't know these movies! I don't ask, ask me about something I do know, ask me about It Follows, ask me about Hereditary, ask me about The Witch! I said, so I don't want to hear shit about how you gonna fill my body with lead. I mean, I'd rather talk about your haunted ass closet instead. I mean, I know these <laughs> tiny ass t-shirts are part of some popular trend, but your shirt's so fucking medium, it can probably talk to the dead. You want answers? I want the truth! A baby scene, though. I, I just don't understand the baby I do not understand the baby scene. I just, why? Why? Disrespect your surround! We need you here with us. So please, make your next smoke. I don't know when you're almost finished. Let's... Hello. We got a burp. The perp's got a burp. Hold on. I'm going to mute it. There we go. There we go. Got it out. All right. As you guys know, and as I said, this is a Chaos Reigns stream. So whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm down. I already have stuff planned, so it don't even matter. Wait. No, I don't. No, I lost it. I had something planned. I lost it. Give me one minute. Give me one minute. Didn't I have it? Didn't I just have it? Okay, don't worry, don't worry. I got it it again. I'll get it again. How's everyone doing? <clears throat> Let me pass this out. Kong, King Kong versus Godzilla. Really out there? I'm hearing good things. I'm excited. I'm hearing good things. So that's got me excited. Let's see. Speaking of King Kong directors, I ran into this. This thing over here. I'll share it. I'll share it. Don't worry. Don't worry. You'll see it. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Peter Jackson names. I haven't seen it yet. We're going to go through his list. I'm going to judge Peter Jackson's list. Peter Jackson's a personal hero of mine. Love his early work. Love his later work. Love it all. He's amazing. Brain Dead, Dead Alive, Meet the Feebles, Bad Taste, The Frighteners, Lord of the Rings, King Kong. Oh my God, I love this guy. What was that other movie? What was that freaking Heaven Heaven movie where heaven feels like social media? What the fuck? Whatever. <clears throat> Whoa, what did I just do? I did something. Okay, never mind. All right, so I'm going to hand out the tweets. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here if you want. Chaos talk about anything straight. <clears throat> I'm going I'm going straight through all this shit. Let me get a drink of water, goddamn. My throat's already fucked. <clears throat> yeah. I'm a raptor, okay? All right. So, Peter Jackson. In case y'all missed it, I did an amazing transition of saying Kong versus Godzilla is doing awesome out there. Will Pete take what's left of Robert Zemeckis' yellow submarine and do something grand and glorious with it? I don't know. We're never going to get old Peter Jackson back, huh? Not even one more movie like that, like Dead Alive. That's fucked up. Okay. 
I don't know. So why did this article come out? March 2024. Is he prepping for a horror announcement? Come on, Degrassi. Why did this article suddenly come out? Whatever. Let me get the conspiratorial. I can do that. All right. So Peter Jackson's favorite horror. Oh, they just list them. Bad taste. Oh, what the fuck is bad taste? I don't understand this. Favorite horror. Bad taste. That's his movie, isn't it? Evil Dead, Dawn of the Dead. Like, this is... what the fuck is this? Okay. This isn't it. I guess this is. What the? And there's one trailer here to separate. What kind of article is this? Obviously, I have a lot of love for horror like Reanimator, The Evil Dead, Dawn of the Dead. I was totally into those films, and I I was, I and still am. Why don't you just say I love those films? Horror movies are a wonderful way for young young. He's not doing a horror film anymore. God damn it, you fuckers, you fuckers, you got me. God damn, I knew this was gonna be a chaos stream. I didn't know this was gonna be a chaos, fucking, depressing ass stream. Dude, the way Peter Jackson's talking, we're never going to get another horror film from him, RJ. And I'm sad. Nobody cares about this topic. Talk about something I'm, people actually want to talk okay, about. Okay, okay. Well, then what do you got? What do you got, Buster? Uh, Johnny <laughs> Depp's making a new yeah. movie with Sidney Sweeney. Who? Johnny Depp. Wow. That's going to be directed by Mark Webb. After Snow White? He induced. Oh yeah, after the Disney Snow White. Yeah, that's his next movie. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's talk about that. What do you got for me? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I didn't read I exactly. Didn't read. I guess good for them. <laughs> well, hold on. Let me get more information. Hold on. Sure. We're gonna. Who's the producer? Who like? Let's take a look. Uh, Sydney Sweeney and Johnny Depp will star in a new supernatural thriller called Day Drinker from director Mark Webb. So it's a supernatural thriller. Day Drinker? Day Drinker, yes. Johnny Depp is going to be in a movie called Day Drinker? Yes. <laughs> I expect a title change. Day Drinker. Aquaman! Aquaman. I, don't care Someone, I forget where I see it. Someone referenced that that in the Amber Heard trial when they did the recording. And then it was like a recording of uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp fighting. And, and, and they're fighting about what they've done recently or whatever. And Amber goes, mm -hmm. like, like, I was just an Aquaman. And then you hear Johnny Depp go, Aquaman. <laughs> Very condescending. It's funny. Well, it's not fun. It's just the way he said it was funny is what I meant. Aquaman. I forget who brought that up. Oh, it's Chris the Bipolar Jedi. Yay. What do you want? Did you hear about my boring-ass topic? And you, RJ came uh, to say... Dude, dude, uh, dude, the minute. The oh, minute. God. Those fucking farting noises, RJ. You got to do something about that. You're dog, what are you talking about? Dude, the your moment. dog's snoring sounds like farting. Go, go Chris. Literally, the minute I saw RJ, the minute I saw him come into the stream, I swear to God on everything I love, I knew the first shit out of his mouth was going to be about fucking Sidney Sweeney making a movie with Johnny Depp. Like, I knew it right away. I don't know how but I knew that it. Was I knew it's it. called Day Drinker, Chris. Johnny Depp spoke. is next movie is called Day Drinker. How and, funny is that? And what's funny is all these fucking people... Even in our circle of friends that are like, yeah, man, it's a good thing he's doing a movie with Sydney Sweeney. She's totally going to save his career. Get the fuck out of here. Johnny Depp's career needs saving? Didn't like a gajillion people come out to support him against that crazy bitch? Didn't everybody lobby to get him back into the Pirates of the Caribbean role? Oh, hell yeah. Hasn't everybody said he's been wrong this whole time? But now all of a sudden... Sydney Sweeney and her fucking great rack are going to save his career. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> That's some funny shit. What's this bitch been in? Besides a bad Spider-Man movie. Immaculate. I saw yeah. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But she's going to save his career. 
<laughs> you know, no, I don't know. If, I don't know if RJ said that. I'm just saying that's what a lot of RJ people did say Twitter. that, and he's been campaigning for that. That's just what a lot of people on Twitter are saying, and I'm just it was like, RJ suggesting it. RJ me. suggested on Twitter that they work together, and then I guess James Gunn made the call. <laughs> Wait, Art, what? Nothing. <laughs> he was too busy fixing his uh, headphones. I just think that's funny that people on Twitter are actually saying that. Like this man has not been in the zone for over four decades. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like this guy has a career up there with like Schwarzenegger and people like that. Like he can leave, come back, leave, come back. This is one of the, this is one of the greatest actors. Do you of think? Our, do you of our think, generation? Do you but think because he used to do a little fucking blow and had fights with his girlfriends? Oh, his career is over. <laughs> do you, well, <laughs> do you think? think uh, do you think he has a harder climb to make than Will Smith? Uh, well, who has the harder climb? I guess is the. I think I think when you're I think when you're Will Smith and people know what to expect, like look, you're not getting any more I Am Legends out of Will Smith. I'll tell you that no studio is ever going to bank on hey, let's make a movie with one guy in it for ninety percent of the movie. You know what I mean? Like, like that's never going to happen. But Will's going to be in Bad Boys. It's going to be fine. He's still Will Smith. People are still going to love him. I don't like that he smacked the shit out of somebody on live. I'm like, that was just dumb. He should have went backstage, and if he really had a problem and wanted to defend his wife's honor, you know, slap him backstage. Or get in a fight backstage. Don't do it in front of 40 gazillion people. Like, what's the matter? With you? Johnny Depp? I don't really know, man. Like, yeah, I gotta be honest. Like, I, I don't really know. The hell is that noise? Dude, It's you're, I'm copying your freaking dog's noise. I By mean, the way... Not, it's Johnny Depp. Right? I think it's my phone. Johnny Depp. I, I think it's my phone. It sounds like these little fart squishing it's earbuds. It's your, it's, it was just is it earbuds. because my phone's gut farts. You see your... fucking gut farts coming out of RJ. Hey RJ, um, I saw this movie, the secret screening called. It was it was ended up being Sting, and then there's a dog, and I swear to God, it looks exactly like your dog. And you, really? you're going to think, if you see the movie, you're going to be pissed off because you're going to think that dog's fucked. It's not. Wait until after the credits. It survives. Don't worry. Cause we'll I agree that. with you, Degrassi. I just think that, you know. Dude, uh, am I the yeah, only one hearing guts it, coming no, from no, RJ? I mean, I'm like, here. It, it's his shitty fucking earbuds. That's what it I'm is. I'm not using earbuds at all. Then what is it? Then what is it? Your head, it's your headphones. Cool. Last no, time I, no. I, I, I told him about this. No, he blamed his dog. Well, sorry, he said that the dog voice. snores and it sounds like that. Oh, well, it's not, it's not, I don't hear it now. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like guts. Dog gut fart. But remember the other night we were on here and he was using his regular phone and we kept hearing that 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 noise like that? I just figured it was his earbuds. He was whacking it. No. no I don't like how you said that. no. Let me tell you, if no. I was a director, if I was directing you in a scene, I'd say redo that because it totally meant yes the way you said no. If well, I'll even come back. Hold on. <laughs> Goodbye. It's his fart box. That'd be funny if RJ's just trolling the whole time. I, I don't see. I don't. Box. I think. I think that. You know what I think? Uh, here's what I think. Counter. I think that once you're in Hollywood for a, a certain amount of time, and you hit like there's star status, where some people will actually even humble themselves and be like, "Hey, it's cool, man." You know, like like a Bill Paxton type, who just every role he got in. He felt lucky, you know what I mean? Or John uh, and, Wayne, you know. And but then you got like the Will Smiths who become fucking superstars, and after so many decades of just like being Bill surrounded Coleman. by nothing but motherfuckers that say yes, you're gonna you're gonna get that. Uh, you're gonna lose touch of reality. I think I think Will might have tossed a little bit, you know. And plus, you're going through this breakup, and I mean, I I mean, I wouldn't want to follow. Look, I never would even married her. Cause I wouldn't want to follow Tupac dicking my girl down. You know what I mean? Like, yo, this oh chick God. used to fuck. No, for real, I'd be like, this chick used to fuck Tupac. I don't want to follow that. <laughs> no, you know what yeah. I mean? You know what I mean? Like, we're not even. Tupac even... was a theater kid. Yeah, he might have started as a theater kid, <laughs> but look, look what mostly he was and talented. You know, yeah, but and you know what did that to him? It wasn't drugs. It wasn't. Uh, well, Lord. he. I think he always had. It was women. Women turned him against himself. Like no. he just he kept running into bad relationships Rest and, in peace, Tupac. and shit like that. And you know, then you know, you got that one that came out and later on found out that he didn't even do what they said he did. Like, you know, like it was just it messed him up. Cause he started out with like if you ever watch that juxtaposition where it shows Tupac Young and he's like, Yo, 
treat women with respect. I used to try to get women and they would be like, they couldn't be with me because I was too nice. And then it shows them after those rape allegations. And this oh motherfucker God, was it. like, this and then, no, and this motherfucker was like, fuck these bitches. You got to shake their ass and break their ass because they're only in it from back then. It was called, we would call it clout now, but they're only in it for themselves. Yeah, man. No, you never sent, you never sent an interview with Tupac. It's a real no, thing. I believe it. I believe people could sometimes just decide to be other people and it, it just works. And I think so. And it's I think real. So too. And it's real. It's not like a fake thing. Like almost putting on a suit. He just decided to put on that suit. Like Eddie. He, I don't think. I'm I'm sorry. I, I like Eddie's who, content. Who the fuck is Eddie? Who the Eddie, fuck is Eddie? Eddie Diaz. I'm just reading oh, it right yeah. now. I'm just yeah, reading right. his tweet. I'm scroll, I was scrolling through to see Whatever. if there was like. But, but look. Johnny Depp can't. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I don't think Johnny Depp can what? draw a crowd anymore. Um, whatever. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't care. I, mean, I know he is. He he did didn't look good good in that court either. Even though Amber Heard got the the brunt of the shit, it wasn't looking good either. They both didn't look good. Yeah, but, yeah. I know, know I know. But she she looked she looked a, a little worse. But he, like he, I don't know. He looked pretty bad too. He looked pretty bad. He wasn't like exonerated <laughs> no he, eyes. he he wasn't but like i'm 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 looking at that i'm looking at a court case and if it was the other way around i would have been like team amber but here's the thing johnny no, maybe not no johnny I'm, didn't johnny didn't break any laws you know johnny didn't like fucking just, well, i thought he hit her didn't he hit her i'm always confused about that, that it was I, confirmed I, he hit her the, once she said that they she, no I, and I, it was confirmed with a text or someone from like the friend that they had, they the got into like shit. a yeah, in the plane, or, yeah, or was or it the something. thing that he, she, he kicked her or something in the stomach or some shit? That's why I'm like, like, all right. I think. Yeah, oh, man, I shouldn't even talk. Always, you know? like, whatever. Well, it's just a bad relationship. A whatever. This relationship. is chaos stream, baby. Chaos. It's a toxic relationship. I heard it got yeah. a little chaotic earlier. What? I heard it got a little bit chaotic earlier. I must have missed it. I was oh like, yeah, I got know. a little chaos, but it's fine. This is a chaos stream. I never did my intro. The crayon, anything is possible. Dinosaurs, they love to watch some movies. Sit back, relax, and get groovy. Flicks on Tubi, they never get bored. With their claws, they hit play and hit record. Oh yeah. T-Rex, he's a movie connoisseur. Roaring in the theater, following all the scores. Velociraptors got the rhythm moving real smooth. John Woo, Sam Raimi, they're his favorite crew. Movies, 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 dinosaurs love to watch some movies. Movies, 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 movies. In Miami, this song ain't wrong. Welcome to the Chaos Stream. <laughs> 18 minutes in, baby. Just like Friday the 13th remake. You know what's crazy too is I didn't even watch <laughs> I didn't watch that case. I caught the highlights, but I had to hear it from everybody that was around. It was it, it was like about? it was like the OJ thing. I'm reading the chat. Oh, it was yeah, like the yeah. OJ thing. Chaos. Like I I literally Chaos had to like Ray. hear that shit so much. Hello. Is the what? audio better now? Uh sure. Yeah, I guess. Where's your dog? Yeah, Dude, you, you know. have a fart machine. No, oh, see, I, I heard that. that. Man, God, you're no. you're the worst. You have a are you fucking really fucking fart around? Machine, you piece of shit. No, 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 no it's no, not even your was... dog. I don't even believe it's your dog. No, 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 no. That was me. That was me. Oh. Uh, no, I'm ta I'm talking to senior nerd. What the fuck oh. was that noise? Oh, oh how'd you do that? No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> I can do that. I apologize, RJ. I apologize. What Chaos reigns. That made me cry. Yes, I love. He is beautiful. That is one of Lars Lars Venture is one of my favorite directors. Ooh. I love Breaking right Lars before, Ranger. You know what I did? Just breaking now the that... Waves, Dogville, Dancer in the Dark, uh, The House That Jack Built, oh. Antichrist. Like, oh, we're flexing your director that. brain again. All right. Hell yeah, this is Director thought, Street, thought, baby, Chaos Street, baby. I thought, I thought it was Chaos Street. Oh, I'm dream. sorry. I'm sorry. A guy that talks about movies is going to mention Lars Van Trier in a Chaos Stream. I'm sorry you don't get the joke, Chris. I'm sorry you don't get the joke. I don't even know who that is. Exactly. Is anybody going to get that joke? Pop. I I kind of get it. I kind of get it. I kind of get it. How do you kind of get a joke? Like, 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 like,
<laughs> like I understood the words he said, but I don't know why it's yeah. Funny. That's it's that counts. You. That counts as kind yeah, of getting I understand, the, I understood like, the words. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, Any, anyway, I, I, I wanted to kill some time before I saw that you were going to go live, and I saw that you went live early, and I was like, what? Two live streams on one day? What the fuck? And I heard about the first live stream. I'm sorry, but to me, that's fucking hilarious. But anyway, you know what I was doing to kill time before your stream came on? I said I'm going to go watch one of those things where the actors talk about all their roles. And they got a Michael Keaton one up, man. <laughs> it's really good, man. Like, Michael Keaton's a fucking G, bro. Like, this dude's, dude don't give a fuck, man. Yeah, I love Flash. Yeah, he was talking about, like, how he used to work out for Batman. And he said, Jack Nicholson walked by. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm working out. I got to play Batman. And Jack Nicholson goes, what the fuck are you doing that for? He just walked off and left him. And then he got so bulky, he barely fit in the suit. It's and he realized he realized he would have been able to move better in the suit since the suit was already had fake muscles anyway. <laughs> it's just a funny that's, interview. That's or when funny. he's talking about Birdman, and he's like, you know, everybody thinks that's about Batman, but it's not. It's it just it, the only thing that it has in relation to Batman is that here's this guy who used to play this character that everybody remembers him for. What do you mean? He's like people that's have it. relation to Batman. Birdman. People think that that that's Birdman is about Batman. Oh, like Michael Keaton. I mean, there's a, there's like. <laughs> coincidence or a correlation or something but uh, there's a that, yeah he said the only correlation is that hey you're this guy he used to play this one fictional yeah this one guy movie. yeah that, he's that like, happens to it. be a bird man he's like that's not at all what this movie's about like he like yeah i don't know <clears throat> I, yeah i don't know what i don't no, know what conversations I, 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 I don't like, actually oh, like, like do people think it's actually like people it was think it's inspired a, by by batman like that movie yeah was yeah people, by him, by him people, and batman yeah, people think that it was written for him oh, to be like, for it to be like, literally, okay, like a Travolta Michael thing Keaton. with Pulp Fiction. How you know, how they say that you know, he, even though Travolta was in movies, his career was like kind of gone, and then here comes Pulp Fiction, boom, you know, uh, yeah. and and it brings Travolta back, and and you know, Michael Keaton's like, that's not what that movie's about at all. He's like, that movie's almost completely about Emma Stone. You know, oh. I'm just, you know, I'm the lead, but it's it's supposed to center around his relationship with his daughter. And, you know, I still don't understand the end of that fucking movie. I don't get it. Which one? Birdman. Oh. He's Birdman. I, a genuine question. Do you, guys, do you guys feel that Birdman as a movie has aged worse since it came out? Because Michael I haven't Keaton seen it back to the franchise work. What? Um, I don't, I don't because think that affects the movie like, either way. The core story was like it, it, it's, it was meta in a way. That's why Michael Keaton played the lead role of Birdman. He was an actor trying to escape his Hollywood past to being in franchises. Right? Has that movie now retroactively aged worse because he did exactly what what the character he played like didn't do? You know. I mean. I think I think it's one of those no movies. because he still got the yeah. he still got the Birdman role. The one thing missing is that damn Academy Award, but whatever. <clears throat> but he still got to do the role. He still got to do the. the role. Well, I'm just saying, like, is it hard to revisit that movie because it's just like, well, it's criticizing something that ended. Up I don't think Birdman's a hard movie to revisit. Mm -hmm. I just think it's one of those. I don't movies. think it was criticizing. You, yeah. You only watch it's one of those movies that's on it your shelf. You love that you it. have it's it in your collection, but you don't go back and watch it every year. You watch it every few years because it's bird. It's a great movie. But I don't I don't think it affects it one way or another. Honestly. I think it's if you like that movie, you're always gonna like that movie. And if you didn't like that movie, you're never gonna. My that's friend Joe point. Joe Hennis from toughpigs.com uh directed a parody of that called Big Bird Man, uh, about Carol Spinney. It's pretty awesome. Ooh. I don't know who Carol Spinney is. Carol Spinney is also the RJ, before Big Bird. Um, there's also the idea that once an actor, like let's say the sequel of Birdman would have been, oh, I did that major part, the part that you know I am content with my craft. You know I'm at peace with my craft. Now I could just coast, and then I, it, you know what? That's I why they ended Bird up doing Birdman Flash. You know, I what think I'm saying? when it like was that, written, there's precedent think... to that of like actors like I did my thing. I got my my do and now i'm just gonna coast to stay in sag <laughs> i i think that i think that like uh degrassi's right i think that when they sat down to write that movie they didn't like go "Ooh, michael keaton ooh, 89 batman and it was written for him it, it could that could that movie could have been written for vigo mortensen it could have been anybody that played that role 
you know, I just think it happened to yeah. fall on Keaton and we got lucky because we, as, as people who have seen the original Batman can go, Ooh, this kind of coincides with Batman. But if you look at actors, you could, it could be anything. It didn't even have to be Birdman. It could have been anything. It could have been Adam West. You know, it could have been anything. It could have been, been the chat. It could have been the, the chat. Man. It could have been, it could have been Jason Voorhees. I'm um, the chat you know? man. Skip it. deep. Don't. It, it could have been like, Thank oh, this, it, this guy Kane Hodder used to play this amazing uh, rendition of a slasher guy from all this, from this genre or whatever. It could have been about Jason Voorhees and still the message been different because the message was basically, you know. Oh, really? So the message? It, yeah, the, the message wasn't really about Batman. Everybody's kind of making it about that. It's you know? never about Batman. It's about the message. So I was like, I was like, who beat uh, Michael Keaton? The best actor it was A. Redmay for that movie he made. He was, was who? Like, I mean, Malik. A. Redmay. I thought it was Remy Malik that year. No, wait, no, it wasn't. Was it Remy Malik that year? No, who was no, it? No, that was, it was Eddie Redmay. That movie he plays um, uh, plays a, a drag queen or a woman. Oh yeah, that's who he beat. I was like, really? I just is that his here. second? Didn't he win one for the fucking? <clears throat> No, that's his first. Oh. First is only. Was that his same the same year? Quite, I, I have another question. What do you think would have happened if Steven Spielberg directed one of the prequels? It'd have been better. Be what would have happened? Be... Yeah, like 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 if like what would history look like if well, he directed? Well, okay, well, I think I, mean... I think I think Obama would have gotten a third term. Lucas uh, wanted him to. I don't think the directing was the problem. I think it was the writing. Yeah, because they, and the pre, but they're, they're, direct, direct, they're directed. Like, they're directed. Yeah, RJ, very use your well. brain. Can we get a few writers in there? Get some David Cole. No, what I'm saying I'm, though, I'm just saying they're directed Spielberg very would have well. Had influence over the script even just a little bit. Man, no, oh, yeah, he, like he uh, did in Crystal Skull, sir. Do you, do you know who yeah. you have to blame for the prequels? There's Ron Lucas. Howard. Ron Howard was the one who talked to George Lucas into directing those. George Lucas didn't want to direct them. He and, went to uh, him. Ron, yeah, he asked Ron Howard to direct one. He wanted he wanted Ron Howard, Steven Spielberg, and and Spike Jones to each direct one of the prequels. And Ron Spike Howard's Jones? like, "No, nah, man, this, yeah. is, this is your thing, George. You got to yeah. do it." So there, there's also rumors that before that, Ron Howard was talking to James Cameron, and Cameron was really excited to direct a Star Wars movie, and then Ron Howard, uh, like, sort of, I guess, what talked him out of it or something. I don't so know. Ron when Ho you look at all those, that's actors. crazy. Ron Howard he, talked James yeah. Cameron out of that. <clears throat> Well, it's Ron and then Howard, Chris Nolan was going to do it, but then Ron Howard came in, zipped by. So, so 1999. That email right from him. So 1999 to 2005 were not for Star Wars fans happy days, and we could all blame it on Richie Cunningham. The craziest one was the Coen brothers were going to do Attack of the Clones, but then Ron Howard what? came you in. You make it these up. You make it these up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think I think I would have told him that too, though. I think I would have. I think I would have been like, you know, look, you directed the first one. This is your swan song. You're gonna make a second trilogy and be done. Why don't you direct it? Do it. You know, you did good on the first one. Uh, you know, the directing isn't the problem in those movies. It's the why writing. didn't he suggest a bunch of like? Why didn't he go? I would get that Paul mm -hmm. W S. Because this is director. this is my opinion. Okay, this is my controversial opinion. I think that George Lucas was the one who directed Return of the Jedi. I don't think it was the guy they credit as director. And where is that coming from? When there's when you look at the behind the scenes, working, you look at the behind the scenes of Jedi and just yeah. the way. It, it, I don't know. I I just get the deep He's standing there. It's really, George Lucas is moving. I I will say this. Yeah, the puppet when, is in. I do find it a little disrespectful that the special editions, like George Lucas, went back, changed those movies, made the original versions unavailable. And he was not the director on two of those movies. It's like, did Irving Kirshner, Richard Marquand didn't get a say in the special edition. He was dead. You know, it, would, like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. Remember the first deal he cut was I get full control over whatever I do. It's a yeah, story. I know. But just as a, just as a courtesy, he should at least have the, uh, the you know, Irving Kirshner is alive. At least he could like sign off on whatever, but Richard Marquand was dead. They should at least have the theatrical cut of Jedi out there and say, maybe like, that's why there's not like <laughs> radical changes in return. Well, here's another yeah, question. You can go into I mean, what was the craziest change? Of I didn't have a problem with the. Yeah, I, I didn't Jedi have a problem. Rock the Ewok song. 
I didn't have a problem yeah, with him making on. the. I didn't have a problem with him going in and wanting to tinker with things and oh look at all this new technology out there and trying to pull the James Cameron role and be like I'm going to make special editions. That's not what bothered me. What bothered me was when he tried to eradicate the stuff that came before that. He tried to get yeah. rid of all the original stuff and make it just the new stuff. That's what bothered yeah. me. Remember when Steven Spielberg made edits to E.T. for the 20th anniversary, but then he put the yeah. DVD out and he was insistent. Both versions had to be on the DVD. You had to be yeah, able to get I, I, Hey, probably learned his I, lesson. Yeah, and, and, also South Park, and Universal South Park. didn't want to do that. Universal was like, no, no, the original, you have to buy the exclusive um, ultra tier box set that comes with like, you know, all the bells and whistles. It's more expensive. Uh, if you're just buying the base DVD, you only get the O the, the O2 20th anniversary version. And, and Spielberg was like, no, 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 no. Everybody gets both versions or we don't do this. And like he put his foot down. I think, you know what? I think E.T. would have been more impactful if they let the alien die at the end. <laughs> I almost got that out without laughing. Shit. I was going to try to, I was going to try to keep that one going. I was going to try to keep that one going. Um, it's, the story, it's the story of Jesus. Though. I wonder if Spielberg thinks that, and he would have gotten that Academy Award. But if they killed the alien off, yeah, all I know I is when I was a kid, night, was like, man, if I would have killed that alien, I had this great idea how to do it. I'm John pretty Will sure that that was the year. I'm pretty sure that year I was very young, guys. And I was there was this really older kid like he had been like 19 and I was little. And I remember being on my bike and uh, he used to like bring his shit out and let me use his ramps and stuff. And I, he's like, I'm going to go see a movie. And I'm like, really? I just saw him. I just saw E.T. I'm like, what are you going to see? And he's like. Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what it was. Because like, I'm pretty sure they came out the same year within, like, the same... It was crazy. They, they were a year apart, yeah. but movies stayed out in the theater so much longer back then that there there would have been an overlap. Because I do know Raiders was still playing in theaters in 1982. And I remember this because Blade Runner came out in 1982, and my uncle took me to see it. And then he decided halfway through the movie, this is too violent. And he said to my cousin, take take joe next door to the other theater he shouldn't be watching this and it was raiders was i just remember the i just remember as i got older thinking to myself what are the chances that i had just got to see et that weekend and i was super excited about getting to see et and that's all i would talk about and that's why i was out riding my dirt bike by the way because of that scene with the kids on the bike and this guy is talking about another spielberg movie that i'd never i'm like what what is raiders of the lost Star? i had no idea who knew that later on down the line, it would become one of the greatest movies of all time and one of the biggest classics of all time. You know, like, like it's just little shit like that kind of always sticks in my head. And the same summer as E.T., Poltergeist came out. And, you know, to, to RJ's point, you know, I've never heard it argued that uh, Lucas actually directed Jedi, but it has been speculated for years that Spielberg may have actually directed Poltergeist. I mean, but people who were on set. I See, think Spielberg I was think more hands on than Toby uh, Hooper was. I think he ghost directed Toby it. Directed it. I think he ghost directed it, and Toby I think Toby it. and I think Toby was the one that had all that gross shit in there, and he talked Spielberg into letting him put Hell that yeah. in there. You know what I mean? And I really believe him. I believe wholeheartedly. Right. I've always speaking believed of this. which horror news. Always director believe. Leigh Winnell's Wolfman will arrive a little later than expected. Holy shit! Did I can't even finish my fucking sentence in. I'm sorry. Come on, you've been talking for a while. Come on, I haven't said shit. No, oh, come on, go, go ahead, finish. Uh, uh, I just, I really do believe that Spielberg ghost directed part of a, a huge part of of the Return of the Jedi. I like, I really believe that. Okay, let's talk about horror because uh, I'm kind of into this. I dig the wolf. Lay Winnell's though... Wolfman will arrive a little later than expected. Now, who gives With a shit? 2025. Just buy it from Europe. To be a bigger year than any year ever. Who agrees with me? I had January. no idea. I had no idea Lee Wanell was doing the Wolfman. Why? And I am so excited about this. Yes, we're in it okay, to win it, doing? people. Well, what has what been the doing? biggest year Universal for... Monsters are back? What has Invisible been the biggest Man? year? Wolfman, for... let's go. <laughs> what has been the biggest year for cinema in the past, like twenty years? And not money wise. I mean, what's the one that everybody was like, "Yo, this year is gonna be fucking." Cr I know two thousand seven was a banger. Like that was a big one. I really and like I think 20, I like. I think two thousand fifteen, right, was a big one, right? No, 20, 2014 was huge for comic book movies. We had uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Civil War, Days of Future Past. So that summer already was like. 
Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. eating that so was, freaking 05 good. was big. 05 was a big one. We had Batman. 05. We had um, uh, Bewitched. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. <laughs> I'm drawing yeah, a blank yeah. now. Oh, I, I gave him Spielberg, Spielberg's you know War of the Worlds. And Spielberg's <laughs> Munich. The Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> So 2018. Oh, really? 05 was Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. <clears throat> that was a I big think 2000, the old, 2019. Yeah, like. There's no way it's even making that January date. Whatever. 2025. It'll make a 2025. The only it'll thing I remember about 2019. Okay, there's two movies. I know that there was Endgame, but there was another big one in 2019. I like this. There's probably like a huge. Why did I get I hope it's because the, the script is bigger budget. I hope 2019 was bigger. Shazam, uh, Captain Marvel. Because uh, they're going to work on brand new Frozen. world of technology, morons. Frozen 2. Yeah, Rising it was like Frozen 2. It was I got to tell you, Invisible, Invisible Man, 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 Invisible Man, you know, I Lee Wynell, movie. It, it wasn't Lee Winnell's first directorial ever. It's his obviously. best. Um, Insidious, he did before that. And, uh, he did oh, the new, the new Invisible Man? The new Invisible Man? The new yeah, Invisible but Man, but Invisible oh, Man was the movie that made me go, Lee Wanell is the name to watch. This is yeah. a guy who is uh, going amazing. on to bigger and better things. Invisible Man he, was amazing. I, jumped, movie is so I good. jumped in the best, theater. One of the I best jumped, intros. Never, one of the best horror intros. In, like, I, who knows I almost never, long. ever jumped That intro was in the amazing. Theater. The when story the, he telling, runs up and smacks the side of the window and the girls are in the car, I fucking jumped. Bro. The movie like, her, opens with her trying to get out and it tells you so much about the situation, right? She's getting her bags, all this shit. Obviously, the Jersey Shore? Afraid. Huh? The situation from the Jersey Shore was in it? No, the situation from the... <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry, it's a chaos stream, so I'm just it trying to... It is chaos stream. Don't you forget it. And don't I you forget it, it So anyway, the storytelling was so good in the intro. I loved it. The, you know, man, the dinner scene. Has anyone yeah. seen that till the X scene? No. No what? It's mainstream. Why don't you go to another stream if you want to talk about your little normie mainstream shit? This is chaos stream, baby. Chaos, right? Wait, 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 what's the normie sh uh, shit that we're not talking about? Just so I know, King Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, tomorrow, no, tomorrow hopefully. Probably, That's I'm honestly, probably, I, I can't wait. To, I'm probably seeing it Tuesday. I'm probably gonna see it tomorrow. Damn it, everyone's gonna see it. It's gonna be I was gonna see it today, but like, I just heard it's know, pretty it good. The, the plan was for us to see it tomorrow. Shit. Like that, like we were planning to see it tomorrow, but my wife isn't feeling well, so I'm actually not sure if she's gonna be well enough to go tomorrow or not. So. Hopefully tomorrow. We'll see. Yeah, right. If not, I could stay Whatever. home and watch uh, Herbie Goes Bananas. Because That's a great movie. Yeah. I love, when I was a kid, I used to love that movie. I know this is a perp movie right here. I love the part what is where it? The, Herbie Goes Bananas. I don't even know what that means. It, it, it's it it's just literally means what people? it says. He kind of freaks out. He starts having engine problems. Bananas come shooting out of his tailpipe. Did Axel it's Foley just, stick a banana up his tailpipe crazy, or something? Crazy. Like, how does he go bananas? Uh, we, we get it. We get it, Perp. It's look look at the movie. cover. Look at the cover. He's covered in bananas. They put bananas on him. Don't you oh. see? Oh, he goes bananas. Yeah, he gets covered in Aren't bananas. Aren't those going to rot and spoil? No, he's Herbie, man. That's but that's also absolutely fine. That kind of we... grosses me out. Just hot bananas on top of a car grosses me out. I, didn't, I never knew I had that phobia till now. Hot bananas are <laughs> kind of gross anyway. And you guys give Perp a break. We talk about cape shit all the time. He never gets to talk about horror. He starts out talking about it, but then we always derail the stream. No, we don't. We should... Let's let's That's talk about a Disney a Disney versus a horror movie. Let's talk about a Disney about, horror movie. How, how about, about that? Herbie versus yeah. Herbie versus Christine. Who would pay to see that? Come on, man. Christine Herbie versus uh, Christine. You would on. would you pay to see that? Yes, I'll I'll pay to yes. See that. directed by John Carpenter. He comes oh, out of retirement. Over. No, <laughs> he, that man can't direct shit anymore. Why not? He's gonna direct so, yeah, a concert. Put... Is his like, brain broke? You produce a movie. No, he just doesn't do movies anymore. He does. Here's what I would do. Okay, you ready? You're gonna, I would. You're have, gonna produce. James, I would have John Christine. Carpenter. I would He's have. He's gonna Christine. come back with footage of him playing in the synth keyboard, and you'd be like, John, I would I have. I would have Christine piloted by Michael Myers, and I would have Herbie piloted by the Minions, and I would make that movie a crossover event 
Okay, get that we'll fucking win. children's minion shit out of there. You had me until then. All right, I get, think minions win. No, I think Crazy Joe win. offered a really good situation, uh, thus situation starring Jersey Shore and Snooki. Fine, and you're Woody blowing and, it. You're fine. blowing it. Bo you're Woody blowing and Buzz. It. We got to put somebody it. in the hurry. Everyone car. knows DJ Polly D is my favorite anyway. So whatever. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Polly D, on the ones and twos. You didn't know that he was on Ellen, dude. Canceled. Canceled. Ellen's you know canceled. What? Wait a minute, Indiana Jones is Disney property. Am I am I am I right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He drive, he drive those Herbie. poor things. He can Everyone drive. Herbie. That. He can drive. Well, we, we can we can bring back the guy who drove Herbie in the '97 movie. Do you know do, Perp? Do you know who drove Herbie That's in the '97? Bruce movie? fucking Campbell. Right? Bruce. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know well, that yeah. one. I know that Herbie. What? What's his face in it too? Justin Long was he not in Herbie? Justin Long was in Herbie. Yes, dude. I, I don't know. Was he? You don't have to go there. The version with uh, the one, whichever one had Lindsay Lohan in it. Michael Keaton was in one. I, yeah, never, saw the one with, I never saw the one with Lindsay Lohan, so I wouldn't. No. Know. Michael Keaton was in that one. That's Batman. We were talking about no, Batman. Oh, that's right, right, yeah. And, yeah, it's not a, and it's not a bad movie. It's actually pretty well done. That one's, that you, one's coming in the mail next week. I, I bought all these from because these these were exclusive to the Disney Movie Club. That, you know, going Joe, out, so. Joe, you'll probably enjoy it because this was right before Lindsay did Mean Girls and kind of lost her mind. No, was, no, you Mean know, Girls was before Herbie. Was Mean Girls before Herbie? No, nah, I, so. I want, I want to, I want to fact check that. Double well, check Herbie, it. Herbie was also O5. You're talking about the O5. You're the guy behind the computer. If you want to work, he might be right. Better. You might be oh. right. I think Mean Girls was like 2002, 2003. I think that's what got that yeah. put her on the mean, map. Mean and... Girls was one year before Herbie. Yes, uh, yeah. O4 for Mean Girls. O5 for Herbie. Yeah. It was I don't know. Girls, I like that one. I Herbie, like that one. And and Freaky Friday, right? Was the same year as Herbie. That's also oh, yeah, another yeah. one. That, oh yeah, she was like a Disney. That, that's the like, one that was like, holy shit. She's no, they're huge. they for she's, about five years. Sydney Lindsay Sweeney was on of top the of the world. Yeah, yeah. She was the Sydney Sweeney. You know, but it's just fun. It's like everybody, like, oh God, it's so gross. It's so gross. I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. The Nickelodeon Disney machine. I'm not watching that. I've heard. I, I saw clips. It sounds I saw pretty clip, gross. Clip. Oh, it's gross. It's but I heard it's you, also you, like a kind of shoddy documentary. So like, yeah, but oh yeah, everybody's saying and, and look, that's fine, okay. But it, but I'm not ever gonna like. <laughs> this kid went to court. They had evidence, okay. And well, he no, no, it's not to, that. It's just I just don't want to see a shoddy documentary. I yeah, mean, and he's I, trying I'm to not tell saying it's like oh he's innocent. He's whatever. trying to tell everybody, look, this shit's been happening at, at Disney and Nickelodeon for years. It's happened in Hollywood. Nobody believes me. And now he's kind of getting vindicated, but people are still going, yeah, but that doesn't really mean that you know Dan Schneider did it or whatever the fuck his name is. Ron Schneider. What the fuck is his name? Dan Schneider. Yeah, did anything wrong. And I'm like, maybe he didn't, but he knew people were doing shit wrong. And that's what makes I him mad. don't know. And I don't like to speculate. I mean, he was very no, go back to the go back to the redhead. She looked really sad. Scroll up. What happened? I mean, she was like very uh grabby. I can tell you this. I have a friend Liver who, King. I have a friend who was on set working as a boom mic operator on all those Dan Schneider shows, and he didn't know there was anything going on. So a lot, of, yeah, but it, it's not something that you like advertise, man. I think that kind of shit happens behind closed doors, you know. But I think it's, I think that a lot of reasons you see people like Corey Feldman or uh, the only one I've never really seen lose their shit is like Macaulay Culkin. Every other child actor I've ever seen, well, I mean, he kind of lost their shit. Until, what about like, Elijah Wood, asshole? Until the new class, Elijah Wood, fucking until basic the shit. new crop. Came around like the Elijah Woods and the Zac Efron. Elijah Woods, a new crop. He came over. He was around the same time as Mac Macaulay. What about Billy Mooney? No, Billy Mooney turned out new okay. Crop. No, no, no one's new crop. There's always been good what child actors. Really what, fucking... what about Angela Cartwright? Who the fuck is Angela Cartwright? What about that other that that little girl in the the silent films that danced and shit? What was her name? Shirley Temple. Shirley, Shirley, Temple. Shirley Temple. That one. Oh, she's. Uh, I mean, there's always right. been child actors. Alpha, what about Alpha? Jerry Mathers? Jerry Mathers okay. turned out okay. I mean, I'll, I the okay, kids in I'll, Night of the Hunter, which Bob just saw. I mean, like, all right, I, if you guys say so. I mean, to okay. Tony Dow, you know, Tony He's Dow, I guess. This movie, no, I the the trailer. I called out Neon Club, on Twitter. Club, Club, I said Neon. I go Club, Neon because I keep I keep seeing this fucking trailer in the in the in the theaters, and I'm like, yo, put this out on the internet. What are you doing? 
This oh, thing has the potential Degrassi. to be the hypest of the hype horror films of 2024. No. Can I answer Degrassi's trivia the poster, question in the chat? Next week. What? Degrassi, Degrassi threw a trivia question in the chat. I know the answer. What two movies from two different directors from two different studios were released six months of each other? Both star Michael Keaton as the same character. Co-star. Yes. What? Does, it, does anyone else know? Yeah. Batman. Is it Mr. Mom and Gun Ho? No, it was Out of Sight and Jackie Brown. Uh, both were based on Elmore Leonard novels, and he played the character Ray Nicolette in both films. Oh, that's right. He had that little Yo. tiny minute in Out of Ooh. Sight. He had that little tiny fucking, yeah. Ooh. Okay. I remember him out of sight. The original that's Avenger. He answered Degrassi. Pay up. I don't know if there was a prize. Oh, I didn't know either. <laughs> no, I, lo I, I said that just in case. I love that Tarantino makes them connect, even if you don't know they connect. Like, crazy-ass Mr. Blonde is Vincent Vega's brother. They're the Vega brothers. Like, I love that shit. I knew yeah, that. That, that. That was nice. I knew that. They don't. Did you really know that? Oh. Yeah. Inglorious Bastards is also lineage somehow to one of the Vegas or some shit. One of them. They tried to say oh. that the Vegas were somehow connected with no country. And I'm like, what? The fuck? The Coens don't even... Fuck with Tarantino, do they? Like on any level, I know he loves their work, but I don't think they've ever worked together. So I don't know why you would Tar Tarantino and Cohen's. I don't. Know yeah, them. like how I've the never fuck... heard them. They never comment on each other. I think Tarantino mm -hmm. definitely has commented on the Cohen's at some point. Oh yeah, he said that they were like the best writing duo he'd ever seen. You know, since the old days of like whatever. Daft is Django's grandson, really. I love that they put all that shit together. I just... love the Shaft movies. My only, you know, here's my only complaint. The, the last Shaft movie was called Shaft. There's not, there's three movies called Shaft. Uh, there's yeah. the original Shaft. There's the first Shaft with Sam Jackson. And then there's the second Shaft, which Sam Jackson, where it's about his kid. And all three of them just are called Shaft. Oh, that's right. They... they did make another one about his kid. I forgot I all think... about that one. That was just a few years ago. Yeah, I think that one should have been called Shaft with an S at the end because there were three shafts in it. Richard Roundtree, the son, and Sam Jackson. Should have been shafts like aliens. Should have just added an S at the end. And the one before that, the first Sam Jackson one, should have been for the love of Shaft. Do you know how they got that name? It's absolutely how you think they got it. <laughs> just put it together. That No, it really is. The guy that used to write those novels... Uh, was like it used to be back in the day, back in the sixties. Yeah, he used to say, "Give her the shaft," and that's how he got the name uh, Shaft because he was such an alpha character. You know, watch your mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just your mouth. I'm just talking about Shaft. I you did, know? even though it was a, it was a, not a commercial success. I loved the 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 Shaft with with uh, uh it, it, with Christian Bale and uh, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Wright, Jeffrey Jeff Wright. Wright. It was just so good. It was so good. Does anybody know the uh, the, the title of the fourth Shaft novel, the, the one that was never turned into a movie? Fuck no, you I know? never I never watched that shit. When I was the, fourth, the, the fourth novel was about Shaft going to Israel, and the title was Shaft Among the Jews. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. Wow. How come they haven't made that one yet? Come on. Do it now. Is anyone doing? gonna tell me at least what this movie's about? Like, I don't give a shit about the trailer. I would just like to know what the fuck the movie's supposed to be about. Is it a horror movie? It's a horror movie. I have no idea what it's about. Okay. You watch the trailer so, though. I exactly. Wait, what? Cool. Maybe maybe they'll give us some knowledge. It's yeah. about a girl that's working this hotel, and then just weird yeah. shit just starts happening. It's fucking crazy. It looks amazing. Okay, well, I guess it looks I'm amazing. Like a ghost story. The trailer's coming so. out next week. I'm definitely gonna do a fucking celebration stream because I've seen it twice in the theater, but it's not released on the internet. I think it's the horror event of the year, personally, so far. Personally, you saw last a trailer, night. Uh, the devil man. was really good, huh? I'm saying that trailer alone for me is like the best trailer I've seen in a while. And if it's if yeah, it lives up to the hype, I think I don't. It's gonna be great. <laughs> The best trailer I've seen this year, no joke. Like, and I guess it's been around. I can't let him catch it sooner, but one of it may be one of the best trailers I've ever seen. That Monkey Man trailer is something special, man. Like, I don't Absolutely. know, man. There's just something there. I hope the movie lives yeah. up to that trailer, man. I felt 
I felt like that for I like the Dogman. Although Monkey Man, I'm really excited to see. I the the, the that special, the sauce, the personal was Dogman, and then uh, I saw the uh, I saw the TV glow. I love that trailer. I love seeing it in the theater. You Long know, Legs is a great trailer too, Degrassi for sure. You know what might be my favorite trailer of all time? Like Which like one? a trailer that just blew me away, and I was like, I can't wait for this movie to open. Which one? Uh, and again, it's an 05 movie. 05 mm-hmm. was a hell of a year. Yeah. Sin City. Robert Rodriguez's Sin City. Oh, oh, Sin City. Yeah, I, like I think City. if I think the the most hyped I've ever been for a trailer is because it is the first time it ever happened. There's been there's been many team ups, but that first Avengers trailer with with uh, uh, uh nine inch nails and and, and fucking nick really? Fury comes out with the rocket trailer. launcher i loved it dude i loved I didn't that trailer. it was a good trailer i didn't i wasn't dude i didn't go to the avengers like until like the second or third week it came out and it was by chance i wasn't even going to give it a chance and i was just absolutely wow, was blown away i was absolutely blown away i was like laughing i was like I couldn't stop talking about it for like there's days so after. much subtlety in Avengers that. is like one of the in best Avengers theater experiences is. I've ever had. When Captain America goes up in that thing and they throw the fucking grenade after he's whooped all their asses with that and he jumps up and literally tucks his body behind the shield mm-hmm. and it blows him out the window. He lands on the car, but he's still like got the wind knocked out of him. It showed that he's such a badass, but he still takes pain. And just the, the 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 thought for Whedon to go listen when you jump, I want you to tuck your body behind the shield. Like that's just super smart. That I don't care what people say about Whedon being an asshole. He's always been great at directing ensemble casts. That's mm-hmm. what he's known for. And, and that that scene, something about that trailer, and it might just because it had Nine Inch Nails music. I don't know. I really was very fond of the original Starship Troopers trailer before it got caught in production hell and got put on a shelf for I don't know how many years. The same way uh, House of a Thousand. I don't even know if you guys have ever seen the original House of a Thousand Corpses trailer. Probably. Awesome. I was that- getting track of that one. Dude, that shit came out. I remember seeing the original House of yeah, two thousand one. Yeah, like at the beginning of a movie years before it. Ever yeah, it was came like out. Pearl Harbor or some shit. It was nuts, yeah. dude. Like, and it I came went, out like two thousand three, I think. Yeah, in October, maybe two thousand. Who knows? It was. I. What? It happened again too. A movie that never got released. It, when I rented Bad Boys, the original Bad Boys on VHS and Pulp Fiction, I rented them in the, on the... Here's the three... I can remember. There were the three movies I rented on the same night. I rented Under Siege 2 because that was before Steven Seagal was a laughing stock. I rented Bad Boys because I'm like, Martin and Will Smith, I got to see this. And I everybody was telling me about Pulp Fiction. They wouldn't shut up about it. It was like, a, it was like an event rental. You know how you have event movies? Well, this yeah. was an event rental, like the movie Kids. You know how you yeah. pass that that DHS around all over that summer. We, all, me and my friends, did anyway. And I remember at the beginning of Bad Boys, there was a trailer for something that didn't come out until like two thousand one. It took six years for that movie to come out. There's this, uh, there's this this movie called Violent that um it did festivals, but it never came out. It's supposedly a brilliant movie. It was released like they. They did a festival run in like 2014. It did amazing. It was a really cool idea, concept. I don't know if it finally got released, but it's been year. Obviously, it's 2014. It's been years, years. Never got a release. I think there was an artistic intent with that of these uh, directors, whoever did this, of just doing a couple like theater runs everywhere. It's an artsy movie, but it's pretty. It's pretty interesting. It's about this, this girl like thinking of life uh, right as the world ends. Thinking of her life or some shit. So uh, I heard about it. Unfortunately, I missed it. I probably would have seen it. Pretty interesting movie. Yeah. I wish I saw it. No, I forstår that. This is a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. Is that house floating? Yeah. There's like cre- there's like cool imagery. That's what I'm saying. It's a little weird movie. I got to miss. Degrassi, can you find this movie? I would love to see this some blue red. Like if someone got it or something. It's a weird little movie. I like my weirdo movies. Yeah, dude, that sounds amazing, Degrassi, by the way. That's true. 
Oh. You shouldn't fear death. Just live every day as though it were your last, but like don't consider the last day. Or maybe live life like life was on pause. So you had him for the time. You fell off there. Hey, it's a great movie too. I wish I could see it. You know what's fucked up is I used to see trailers like this. Yeah. And I would get so excited. Um, yeah. Because I knew movies like this were going to make me feel something. Yeah. And I was really huge into indie stuff, and you could only find this kind of stuff on it. And now I don't get excited like I used to. And I and I honestly, I'm not saying this to be hyperbolic. I think it's because literally I've died inside so much over the years that things like this just don't excite me anymore. And that's too yeah. bad because shit like this used to get me so excited. Why? Well, that's good armor to have for this one because you're never going to see it. Impossible to get. Uh, it's been unreleased. It's unreleasable. There's got to be a way to get it. Pause. Find it for me. Everything stops. I'll give you fifty dollars. It's, it's 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 unreleasable. Yeah, it's not. They haven't it's, distributed. I think it. I think there's artistic the with that. Is this yes. the trailer for Coyote versus Acme? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. We didn't even get a trailer for that. We got Batgirl, but I think there was artistic intent. I think that was the whole point because the whole movie's about like death and moment or whatever. So they never want to give it. They never want people to repeat it, you know. So they just wanted to. People play it wanted play. Batgirl. I understand, but I look as much as I hate that they did it. I under and what happened to those brothers is horrible, but I understand why they did it. I don't understand why they did it with Coyote versus Acme and the exactly. new Looney Tunes. I don't get it. I don't know why they did it. People, you know what I mean? I don't understand. They weren't ready for. I don't know. There's a theory. I, I, that, think, I, I, I think I figured I it out. I, I think I, I, I think I understand why Coyote versus Acme happened. Now, just because I say I understand why it happened doesn't mean I agree with it, and doesn't mean I don't think it's stupid because I still think it's stupid. But what I think is because we it came out that Zaslav and the people that made the decision never even watched the movie. Guys, so you has have... this ever been done before, Joe? Like, honestly, have oh. they? I, I've heard of pieces of movies, but have they ever link shelved me. Entire, link me, link me, have they link ever me. shelved entire finished products like that before? Ever? I mean, I, I, I mean, you got things like Jerry Lewis's "The Day the Clown Cried," but, yeah, but he, you know, but he didn't. He didn't, man, he didn't want. He didn't want to um, release it. I think. He, uh, it was but, but here's the thing. Here's my thing for, for Coyote versus Acme. It's a live action uh, Warner Bros. live action animation hybrid. And the last one to come out like that was cool. Space like, Jam 2. Okay, okay. I was and, Spa say, like, and Space Jam 2, nobody liked Space Jam 2. Oh that God, movie was critics didn't Thank like you. it, audiences didn't like it, no one liked it. So I think you've got – now the difference is Space Thank Jam 2 was garbage, but we're hearing from everyone who's seen Coyote versus Acme that this is really good. But we know the people who made the decisions didn't watch it. I think they're just looking at the numbers, and they see the numbers for Space Jam 2, and they go, this doesn't make financial sense. But they're not taking into account that one was good and one was bad. Like that's not even factoring into their decisions. Yeah, Some people like Space Jam. Yeah, but Degrassi, entire finished products – like entire finished products that are ready to go on. Yes. I remember movies that were yes. shelved. That's yeah. so dumb to me. I that movies that have been sh I, okay, I think because they I lose remember, money. They lose money. They have to pay I mean, theaters. Right? The I mean, there's some theaters, movies right? that they made. They the the, how does that work? I don't know how that works. I mean, there's movies that they were shelved. They definitely have to pay for marketing. Why market but a movie they know is a stinker? The movie... I know there's movies that's been shelved because it's been horrible. Like, okay, you know the movie Tiptoe? Yes. With, yes, that was shelled uh, and that was hidden, and then they just quietly release it. Hell yeah, they did quietly. I just think it's weird that there are movies out there like like Henry. You know what I mean? Yeah. But horror but is different. Yeah, horror but Coyote really versus different. Acme had to get shelled. You know what I mean? There are Dude, truly repulsive. Know. There are truly repulsive films out there where you're like, why the fuck would they even let this out? Or just Dude, bad movies. Know, we don't know what the number like. Joe's Man. technically right. Like they don't, they didn't see the movie. They don't need to see the movie because what happened was their accountants, their number crunchers said, "Yo, this is gonna bomb." It doesn't matter how good it is. Like no one. Said, why I think they when got they 90. put it up, dude. When they, they put it up for sale, when they put or, it up for sale, did they not put it up for sale? I don't know. They, we don't they know. Put, they they put it up for sale, but what and they then did no was, one bought it. 
Well, yeah, because what they did was stupid. They announced to the public in the trades that they were going to get only did that 30 for million public pressure, I bet. Yeah, but Just they the announced target. in the trades that they were going to get 30 million in tax credit. Now, if you're a competing studio and you know that Warner Brothers is only going to make 30 million in tax credit for this, uh, why would you offer anything more than say 40 million? Because yeah. they have because because they, they, no, they, 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 they would release a hit. They got 90. They got they would release a hit, so those studios know that it was gonna bomb too. That's just dumb to me. I I just don't see a no. coyote movie. I don't see a the coyote crunch, on a movie bombing ever. But, but the what what thing is, they had offers. They had offers from Paramount, they had offers from Amazon, but those offers they said that they were lowballing them. But they were trying is to get it low for it, is it they want 70 million but if yeah. you are a buyer, the production for it if you 70 million they want them to cover it's, the cost but but if you cost. are a yeah but if you are the buyer and you know that their best offer other than you is 30 million then why are you mm. it's, you can have 30 million or you can have what we're offering which is more than 30 million and that makes me said three like why? Why would you then say like Maybe say okay you can have art. you can have seventy million like that's just bad business like if, well, if I, I I thought we were talking about bad girl still they they that got ninety they got ninety for that you know what I mean no and no I we're talking know. about we're still talking yeah. about coyote yeah and I'm just saying mm -hmm. even though bad girl was gonna be bad they, had they released dude, it, it they seems like the number the, ninety sorry sorry Chris go ahead say that no again. I'm just saying had they released bad girl. Worldwide, they would have made more than ninety. They would have no, made more than ninety. No, but it's ninety. But then we're not talking marketing. No, they don't market it. They just put the shit out there. Small marketing. No, really, no, uh, Bad Girl you know? was what was it going to be on on uh, HBO Max? It was, there it might was have been another be Madam Web situation where it barely skirts by. Oh, uh, it was. Oh, wait, right, that was going. That wasn't going to theaters. Nope. No. Oh, yeah, now I definitely know why they why they okay okay yeah. yeah. Well, but it. I don't see a Coyote Roadrunner movie not making money. Like that's insane to me. That's something everybody, every that, dude, that's they generational. don't, they don't. And then I hear stupid things like like John Campion was saying. Well, what did the last one make with Brendan Fraser? But, they but never, no, they've, they've, they've never made a Coyote Roadrunner movie. Yeah, but I'm that's saying. the thing because then you hear stupid things like like John Campion was saying. Well, today's kids don't even know who the Coyote is. Bullshit. That's why. That's why you make the movie. That's you like have saying to keep us wrong, Joe. That's like saying today's kids don't know who the fucking Beatles are. But That's the thing bullshit. is, but the thing is, if you don't, you do, you need, even if the kids, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant because if the kids don't know who it is, that's just more reason to make the movie. Because no. you need to put oh, the, also, the characters. Dude, Warner in Brothers, the dude. If Warner Brothers is in huge debt, they're not in the mood to freaking lose more money on this. I know. I understand okay? that too. I understand that too. Like but it I, seems like the number the crunchers. Guys, but Joe, Joe, Joe is just saying it seems in like the way, number. What I said the number the crunchers. Crunch. The people that get paid. The people get paid for this shit. Told them that if they were to release and do a whole marketing shit for Coyote versus whatever, it was going to lose the money. And it mm -hmm. seems like other studios agreed. They must have. They must have. Also, it's a have. great but, but remember, it's just also, the I shit. also remember. And this theaters. is the same thing happened with Batgirl. You know, I want Batgirl out there more I know, than anything. But I, think, I, I want to see I that think, movie more than anything in the world. I think that was I think that was a big more than any. Theory, I'll trade too. any fucking movie that's about to come Look out. Look at the time Batgirl, frame, including Look at the time frame, including Look Long Legs. Say the grass, including Long Legs. I and mean, all this shit. if you're if you're gonna if you're you like, I don't think you guys can say that like COVID and the writer strike and all those things. Like if the, if you say those things, pay, play, like look at when yeah. they were supposed to release Batgirl. The studio still hadn't bounced back yet. Look at Coyote. Yeah. The studios like I it, I don't now. Barring the writer strike, I think that COVID. I think a bunch of people got together and said, "No, we can't release it. We can't release it." Blah blah. But jo I also agree everything Joe just said about. That's what I've been saying about the Crow. I mean, artistically, well, who I want I every movie to be released. I'm yeah, saying who I'm am just I telling Joe the Crow. I'm not. The argument is the against these movies. No, wait, guys. The argument is against the like the whole idea. Like, I want every movie to come out. I want Batgirl. I want Coyote. But it's the argument about like, oh, they need to do it for because it'll make them money. Like, that's like the wrong argument to like make. No, I'm just saying. I don't that think I it. Can't, I don't I think don't, it will. Maybe, not, it will. What I'm saying is, if your argument is today's generation doesn't know these characters, 
Th- yeah. That's that's not a good argument. That's no, why, that, that's why exactly. you make the movie because that's how you introduce these characters are introduced to multiple generations. But they, Warner Brothers project. is not doesn't have a responsibility to introduce these characters. Thing if they're going to lose money for it, especially if but they're already in debt. That's the thing. They probably wouldn't lose money on this. They probably would make. See, the you're making the argument. That's what I'm saying. You did make the argument. That's what I was saying. The argument is they would make money. Their numbers, their accountants told them they would lose money. Same thing yeah. with Batgirl. Dude, that and this is another reason why we should fucking praise Sony Studios because the same shit happened with Madam Web. What was gonna happen with Batgirl pretty much happened with Madam Web. What does Sony do? They don't fucking lock up their movie. What they do is like, okay, let's tone down oh. the marketing, don't spend that much money, but they still release their fucking movie. I and I can't tell Sony. you, I can't tell you how much I wanted to smack every single person upside the head who I heard say. See, Sony should have just written off Madam Web. No, no, F you. Assholes, you don't dude. do that to movies. You don't do it to any hypocritical movie. assholes. Even if just the movie's complete it. shit, you could just have people ignore it. You could people fucking meme in this shit, but they released the movie. They trimmed the budget for the marketing. I'm sure they trimmed a bunch of marketing, probably for the for a bunch of the post shit. And they're just like, no, oh, just release it, just release it. And you're gonna say that that's like fucking bullshit, but it's like I wanted to see that. I wanted to see Madam Web, no matter if it was good or bad. Even if it's trash, it ended up being beautiful trash but the perfect oh, example, the the perfect example so bad is why a lot of people are going to watch it on streaming now perfect yeah. example is the 08 chipmunks movie remember the chipmunks in 08 with jason yeah. lee yeah now in 2008 what kid knew who the chipmunks were no did any kids know the chipmunks in 2008 no they were from our generation we knew them you know they were you know back in the 60s with the uh they artistically you know, the i agree but i see why they can't but, but they put that movie out they marketed the movie. You know, kids, right. didn't know the kids didn't know these characters didn't have any like legacy attachment to the characters, but they liked what they saw in the trailer and it reintroduced those characters to a new generation. And they ended up making five sequels to that thing and so another animated be- series because a new generation now suddenly knew who the chipmunks were. And a, new live, a-, keep- and a new live action rescue Rangers one, which was really good. That's yeah, how you keep an yeah. IP in the public eye. Yeah, so do, you, do you know how many people? Do you know how many people? I've talked to Perp about this. You know, people have that reacting channels or people in real life I know that have never seen the crow, but now that they've seen this new trailer for the crow, they went back and watched the old crow. And I said, even if this new crow bombs like shit, it will drive people to the old, the, the Brandon Lee version, and that's fine. Just keep the character alive. That's all I'm saying. I'm pulling for this movie, and I'm not going to gatekeep. I'm not going to gatekeep it. It's not my crow, but it still looks pretty rad. I'm not going to lie. It looks pretty cool, man. You know, yeah. and I, and it drives people to the old ones. So many people are going and watching the Brandon Lee version now and going, oh my God, this Brandon guy was going to be great. Yeah, he was. He was going to be great. He was going to be his dad all over again, but like a whole new action genre. Like, can you imagine that time era, him, him competing against the Van Dams and the Seagulls? You know what I mean? And the Schwarzeneggers and the Stallones, like like Brandon would have been right up there with the Bruce Willis's. You know, he would have been right there with them had that tragedy not happened. So I love that it brings people back to see. It would have been his own thing. Those yeah. movies, you know, because if you go watch Rapid Fire, he did like all, martial arts started getting big. You know, he did all the American choreography. The did you know he did all the choreography for uh, Rapid the- Fire? He did? Brandon Lee did all the choreography. He like he planned all those all those those fights. Oh yeah, of course. He and and some of the some of the really original stuff that he did in Rapid Fire, like kicking the door or running up the chain link fence or sliding under that table and kicking the table up in the dude's face before he leg sweeps him. That was all Brandon's idea. He even paid homage to his dad in that movie, The Chinese Connection, when he dressed up like the laundryman with the glasses. Mm-hmm. He paid homage to his dad and did the same thing. To go find it, it's just a great, it's a great, it's all shot in Chicago. Oh, shot Degrassi, ask Degrassi that there's so many scenes in Rapid Fire where you're just like, holy shit, that's our neighborhood. <laughs> it's just so cool. He was going to be so big. So I agree with Joe about that, man. You, you, people would, would, Coyote and the Roadrunner are like, like they're up there with the Beatles, man, the Rolling Stones. They're just, that's that, the Tom and Jerry. Everyone knows who the fuck Tom and Jerry is. But, but but the thing is, it really it doesn't even matter if you know who they are or not. Because keep in mind, uh, if you have something that is not an established IP, how do you market it? People don't know what it is because it's brand new. It's something you just came up with. You sell a movie through the marketing. 
So if you have an old IP that today's generation doesn't know, you're just selling it as a new movie, you know? Like you, you would you would sell like the first Minions movie. Nobody knew who the Minions were because they, they the first Despicable Me. You had to you had to get people interested in that movie with no knowledge of who those characters were. Well, Do you know what it, got me interested in Madam Web? Like me and Perp, we can joke all we want, but the reason we immediately were interested in Madam Web is because <laughs> we knew right away it was going to be bad. Like that's what that's what draws us to it. We knew right away it was going to be bad. I, I appreciated well. I appreciated the. <laughs> the swing i really did i really appreciate and i wanted i wanted it to be good because i want more uh ip to take swings like that yeah and i wasn't you know? mad at sony for wanting to put as long that as out we on have Morbius. a spider-man yeah, as so. long as we have a tom holland spider-man and all these other spider-man why not do this i'm not saying replace. i was just mad because replace the marketing it. was just saying do this too but but the thing is everybody wants to act like that was this terrible terrible movie and the truth is it, it was it, it had problems, but it, it, it was actually like it the was story. Fun. The was story was way worse movies out there. The story, was, the story was great. The They're story way. was fantastic. It was the um it was what do you call it? The dialogue the concept is great. I don't think but, yeah. it's a good story though. You think uh, wait, the story the story the of a villain who knows the people are from the future are gonna kill him and he's trying yeah. to that's a the classic concept. story. Yeah. That's a wonderful story. it just it just needs it needs better dialogue. Yeah. And it, it needs to be a little. That. It needs I mean, to go premise. a little. Need, needed to go a little harder. Be a little more. I was fine with the premise. Slasher horror stuff, but I had I had fun with it. The premise was the, fine. The, the, the production the was just like all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. And the production. But there are some neat neat stuff in there. Like I really like the like I said the the cops getting taken out one by one. I like when she first gets her power in the in her apartment. The way she figures that out with the dub, all that shit. Was, I just don't know why was good. wearing a Batman suit or a, a fucking yeah, Spider Man. He was suit. a good villain. He bad dialogue, bad acting, but uh, and like that's a good actor too. Everything he's pretty cool. That's a good actor too. I saw him in Ridley Scott's uh, Napoleon. He was in Napoleon. Oh, he was Napoleon's friend. I can't believe he's a good actor. I mean, yeah. I've, I, I've heard he is, but I can't. I mean, he's, he was so yeah. bad in that movie. Night, bitch. <laughs> Do you know what this is, Joe? Do you know what this is? Well, what uh, is Night Bitch? I haven't yeah. seen it. No, it's not out yet. It's about a woman who's slowly changing to a dog. I'm going to dip out for a while. It's Friday night. I have to make another it, appearance in another place. And the if moon is going, bright. If you're still going, I'll come back because I want I, I, I miss the werewolf stuff. And I miss the drama. That bothers me. I really wanted to see the drama, but whatever. Fuck what was it. the drama? I missed drama. There was drama. Yeah, I, I missed it too, apparently. It I am it. not commenting. Can, can no you put comment. can you can you put names in the private chat? No, I'm not commenting. Just look <laughs> oh at the last screen, you idiots. Yeah, the last <laughs> stream. And I was just like, what is happening? I didn't, I didn't take it down. No, you did not. No, Wait, there's a drama with the stream. The last y'all be good. Y'all be good. Yeah, I'll be back. The end. This has got a, a, out of hand. I don't know how to handle like fucking chat sometimes. I really don't. And, and oh, like, oh, it was in the chat. Oh. It was within the chat between that I, and the panel and what I literally it was like. We all. I love CGH. I also love my chat. Give Give Degrassi. I don't like, and, the, I don't uh, like the fucking Twitter chat. Give like Degrassi and pop counterculture the ex and Vince. You guys are weird. What? Give Give Vince and uh, Degrassi and pop counterculture wrenches. They're responsible folks. That they happens. could uh, They could do that. Uh, no. <laughs> I am gonna come up with a mod system, Joe. And I think number one right now. Let me check my papers. Hold on. Yeah, senior nerds leading the mod. The the mod. Mod race right now. He's contributed. He's been funny. Yeah. He bitches when necessary. Yeah, he's good. He's been you eager. You actually, got, you actually got minus two from two. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. We just had a commence a confession from Vince. What? He contributed to the drama. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I got, he, was okay I got he was open about it, man. He came right out. <laughs> yeah, everyone's it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, yeah, was was that's why it's dumb. <laughs> That's why it's funny. I gotta check out the last stream. I That's why like, I don't mind oh, like sleep. leaving it up. And TJ yeah. knows I love him. I was like, the grassy knows I love him. Vince knows I love him. Okay. The only people I don't what fucking else? like. Taladia Shamad, he got the Kubrick gene. <laughs> oh my god. Nah, if I mod Taladia. Oh my god, senior nerd, how pissed off will you be if I mod Taladia before you? 
Kalani is ineligible because of his age. Remember when he called you dumb and left? What? Remember when he called you dumb and left? I don't remember that. He said, you nerd, you're dumb, and he left. Remember? Oh, he just seriously. It's when you proved him. No, that lit. He said that right before when you proved them wrong on the fucking uh, the thing, the skins. Were you talking they, about Zach Levi and he got pissed off? Is that it? No. What's kids? Shut up, Crazy Joe. Shut the hell up, Crazy Joe. Oh, so, oh, no, 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 no. He, saw, no. he proved me wrong because I said it was on BBC. He said, no, it was on Channel 4. No, I said it was on BBC. No, no, I said it was on nerd. BBC. No, no, and I told Talia because he, he's, you know, he lives. No, in because it is on BBC the way we see it. It's on Channel Four for him because he's in the UK. Senior nerd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, were right BBC, technically. But BBC is a channel. I don't know. No, BBC. but the argument was that because oh, you said that that uh, that the dude oh, uh, oh, Lex Luthor was in Skins. Yeah, yeah. I say that he did. That it yeah, wasn't. People... You said yes, he is, and then you checked, and you ended up being right. Well, of course he is. And then he I said didn't. you're dumb and he left. And that was funny. I didn't remember him calling him. Uh, him he, you didn't call him, him anything. Up. You call people think shit all the time. Got to work on that. I don't know. He's talking about. You got to work on that, senior nerd. And you got to get a better mm -hmm. mic, too, if you're going to be. Otherwise, you're just modding from the chat. Wait, wait. How bad is it? If you get yeah. mod duties and you don't have a fucking good mic. Wait, how is it? Is, am I crackly or what's going on? Yeah, you're so crackling like, a little bit. You're kind oh, of like, yeah, oh, every oh, once in a while. Oh, I'll be right back. Bindle Stiff, just go watch his fucking shit. When are you releasing that video? Mention Kevin Smith. This fucking chat loves Kevin. Like this, this community loves Kevin Smith. He, he produced, Kevin Smith loved this movie so much, he, he put it under his uh, label or whatever. I was in a Kevin Smith movie. I know. Crazy Joe was in Chasing Amy. I chased Amy. He was in Chasing Amy. I He was in the stand of a hockey game, correct? Yeah, I was one of the viewers of the hockey game. I was in a, I was a viewer in a football game in any given Sunday. Oh, so I could have met you that day because I saw I was living in Florida at the time and saw the casting call for that. Yeah. Should have gone. We could have been sitting next to each other at the, at the football yelling. game and not knowing each off. other. <laughs> I was yelling at Al. I said, Al, Al Pacino, Al Pacino. And I was the end of that. Was, like, that was 25 years ago. How old were you? I was in the, I don't remember how old. I was in the ninth grade, however old I was then. I, I, 99, I okay. think. Early 99. 99. I, I did not remember. see Oliver Stone. Pepperidge Farms remembers. All right. Night, bitch. Guillermo del Toro's Frankenstein, obvious. The Shroud. What's Wildwood? Yeah, actually, good. Good call. That's a, that's a town in Travis New Jersey. Knight. Oh, it's Travis Knight. Oh. Travis Knight. Okay. He did Bumblebee. Yeah, he did. That's a Bumblebee dog. Set upon Portland city limits in Wildwood, you're not supposed to go there. You're not even, it's a horror movie, it looks like. You're not even mm. supposed to know it exists. This sounds like it was based on a, okay, on a graphic novel or comic book. But Prue McKeel is about to enter this enchanted wonderland. Oh, it's like fantasy. This is so a comic book. Her baby brother, Mac, has been taken by a murder of crows into the forest depth. And she, along with her, this is like fucking. Does it sound better than the Let remake of The Crow? What? You got a whole murder here. The Crow only has one crow. This is a murder of crows. I think the crow should have the ultimate villain of the pigeon. I think the crow's bad guy should be called the pigeon. He, and he has like the power of pigeons. He just, and all, uh, he just sits on statues and goes, coo, coo. Yeah, and then he just shits on them. Yeah. That's, and then the crow goes, ah, this is one like kryptonite shit. Ah, I'd, I'd watch shit. that. I could take bullets, but not pigeon, not giant man pigeon shit. I'm losing viewers talking about this, but I love it. Yeah, he did one of the best Transformers movies, Bumblebee. He did the best Transformers movie. Do Bumblebee? You know who, yeah, do you know who Travis Whatever. Knight is? Do you know who like his dad is? What? 
His dad, Travis Knight's dad, is the founder of Nike. Whatever. Yeah. Ben Michael Affleck Bay top. did the best Transformers movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the first one. Let's go with the third one. Wildwood looks sounds pretty good. Wildwood sounds pretty good. I think I'm going to see it. Are you guys going to see it? Type one in chat if you're going to see it. No one ever types any of the shit I say. Type one if you're on X. If you, you want to see it really bad. Weirdos. Why are you if, watching me? If you're really X. excited and want to see it, write Waka Waka in the chat. Yeah, write Waka Waka. Like That's Fonzie. how we know. Yeah. Like, like Fonzie. Isn't that his name? Fozzie. Oh, Fonzie. I thought it was Fonzie. Hey, hey Waka Waka. <laughs> hey. One, because I hate myself. Oh, no. One, because you love it. You love to hear it. Wildwood sounds pretty wild. And I would. Thank you. Why 2 k Oh, uh, yeah. Joe Bob's on. Degrassi just is reminding us Joe Bob's on right All now. All right. Watch your Joe Bob's. This is the this is the Anything Go stream. Uh, Eddington, new Ari Aster. I still haven't seen his newest one because it's three hours. Eddington, that's the spinoff of Paddington, right? Paddington, Eddington, yeah. yeah. It's a fucked up Ari Aster version. Eddington mm -hmm. Bear went up the stair. Nobody wrote Waka Waka in the chat. Mother. All right. The Deliverance, a mother whose children became demonically possessed in a thriller inspired by an actual... Ooh! Lee Daniels, wait a minute. Really? Precious director. Okay. He's doing a horror film based. Based. Yeah, his name sounded familiar. Precious. Precious was like a horror film. Did you see Precious, Joe? I did not see Precious. I Mod Senior I Nerd. Saw, saw trailers for Precious. Hello? I was thinking, hello. It's pretty intense. Hello? What's up? Oh man, your mic sounds so much worse. It's hilarious. I think intense mise en scene in Ari Astor's key trademark the production department was over time on his sets. Is nothing sacred. Maybe. I don't I don't notice that in hereditary, but maybe in Midsummer for sure. And I haven't seen his new one. Hereditary, I'm sure it's there. I, but I hereditary, I do see it like seems like a good like well done like you know but i've seen that sort of style and shit in terms of the in terms of production How about now the production design production designs and sets and shit if that's what you're talking about okay all right terry hides naked on. hell yeah you bet it does that's where i like them pop that's where i like them is it good now am i good now you better you better yeah sure is it can, has anybody let's here it. let's try it man we got 20 viewers I got 20 people watching. I don't. If you're on on X, ill, gross. Come on YouTube. It's a little gross. It's a little gross that you yeah. would do that, but whatever. Uh, we finally got senior nerds shit going. Joe's over here. I could finally ask him all the questions I've always wanted to ask him when it comes to horror films. This is a chaos stream. Anything goes. Mm. If you want to talk Marvel, DC, Star Wars, this is the fucking place to do it. God damn it. So, uh. Speaking of naked old people, this pop counterculture mentioned naked old people and hereditary. Uh, Trash has, anybody, has anybody here ever seen uh, Crispin Glover's movie, What Is It? No, what is it? Oh, man, I don't think I've ever been so annoyed by a movie. <laughs> uh, it, it was he was at a convention, Have you seen Argo Drift yet. Uh, he was at a convention and, uh, you know, it was a horror movie convention and most of the people there wanted to get his autograph on something Friday the 13th or back to the future related. And he had a rule that to get his autograph, you had to attend a screening of his movie. What is it? And then whatever you got signed, he would write real big on it. Thanks for coming to see. What is it? Um, sometimes like, like he wrote it obnoxiously big on things. 
some people told me he ruined their Back to the Future posters because he wrote that so big on there. Um, but the movie features a lot of naked people with Down syndrome uh, oh. getting like whacked off by women in goat masks. It, it was like the ultimate like shock movie. Like just I'm going to put this movie on and you're going to sit there and you're going to watch it. And then I'm going to stand there and like uh, be like, where were you that day? The movie was filmed. And why, why did you have a goat mask that day? Seeing oh, that? man, I need the money. I got bills to pay. <laughs> I noticed that. You know, mask. I got I got cat feed and myself to feed. It's Mr. Glover, man. It's fucking George McFly. I can't, how can I say no to George McFly? He's making a children's he, movie. He are is you, my. Are you debating Deg Degrassi? You guys, are you going with Pop? Good luck, guys. Good luck together. Everyone be friends at the end of the day. If you guys are debating, I don't know. Trash humpers, Joe. What do you got? Trash I Deg humpers. Degrassi. Come on, this is a good one. This is your. This is your territory. I should have. Sounds, my sounds like a. Uh, sounds like Pop. a movie Crispin Glover would have directed. No, it's Harmony Corinne. Do you know who that is? Oh no. Oh, yeah. You don't know who Harmony Corinne is? I don't think so. Spring Breaker. Uh, that's the man. Argo oh. Drift. Look at this one. This is his newest one. I heard it's quite an experience. I heard people have bobbing it. Like, yeah, his most famous one is probably Spring Breakers, but he did Gummo. You heard of Gummo, right? Oh, I've heard of Gummo. Have you I, never seen saw it? I never saw Gummo. Neither have I. I've always avoided oh, this one. He did I've kids. Seen scenes from it. Uh, I've seen kids. kids. I like kids, but he wrote kids. That was... um. Larry Clark movie. But you know the thing about Harmony Corinne, like the, he the one I'm dying to see is Mr. Lonely. I love this concept. It's in Paris, a young American who works as a Michael Jackson lookalike lookalike meets Marilyn Monroe, who invites him to a commune in Scotland where she lives with Charlie Chaplin and her daughter Shirley Temple. <laughs> I love it. I need to see this. Mr. Lonely. Yeah. You think it's <laughs> Harmony Grassy, you've seen this one, right? Perp, what do you think of the movies of Todd Salons? Uh, I love Happiness. I thought it was. I love one. Happiness too. That's me, the, the me one. Me and Homer. Homer loves Happiness too. We talk about it all the time. I love I, Happiness. I uh, hate I that I can't get a good copy of Happiness. Yeah, that's it's a tough only, one. That's a yeah. tough one. Oh man, if people that like when people want to talk about movies and they don't fight for movies that can't be made today, <laughs> or at least would have trouble. People, mis that people misconstrue that movie, like the the Dylan Baker character. People really misconstrue that. They're like, well, "Oh, look, I see, this I need to see this movie, man." Mr. Lonely is wonderful. No, I like his stuff too. Sometimes I like a, I like a, I like Trash Humper somehow. Whatever. I thought it was a good found footage shit. Whatever. Corinne, okay, do you know? Okay, um, so Harmony Corinne, he was known to make. Oh, see, I knew you guys would connect with that one somehow. He was like a <laughs> frequent guest. On the David Landman uh, show, I got you with my uh, bait, my trash humpers uh, bait. Yeah, uh, so Harry Karin was a frequent, always he always on the you know when David Landman was on the uh, the late show because he's just a weird guy. And one day, it was Frank, a bit. yeah, it was a bit. But then one day, I, but then um, David Landman banned him from the tonight uh, from the late show because he called him. Digging through uh, Meryl Streep's purse in her dressing room when she was not there. That's awesome. Yeah, he was like, he was and and no, it's not. He was, but I think that was like he was like. I think he got. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the, I've seen the, the videos. Yeah, and then um, but then uh, and then um, uh, Dave Frank was there to promote Spring Breakers and talk about Harry uh, Carey. I was like, yeah, he's a weird guy. I say. So what's the things about why he's been here? And he and th that's what David Lim told a story about him, oh, like you know, purse that you know stealing stuff from Meryl Streep's purse. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was Kevin Spacey yeah. did that. What I was what I was gonna say though is that the thing I always hear about with happiness is people take a look at the Dylan Baker character and they're like, oh, I can't watch that movie because it it glorifies his condition. And it's like uh, it doesn't glorify so. it at all. I mean, it's I in the movie. So. He's a guy who who has a problem, and it's yeah. a gross problem. But it's not like saying, 
hey guys, look how glamorous this guy is. You should be like him too. I think his life pretty much goes <laughs> to shit afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not uh, glorifying yes, anything. Yeah, it's not played right. It it put. I think what they're doing, they have a problem of seeing a di that perspective because they do put you in his perspective. And so, like, it had they people have an automatic like, no, how dare you? How dare you? Like, have that intense scene on the phone where the father is saying, "I'm going to come and kill you," and put me in this perspective where I'm feeling the intensity from that guy's perspective. Like, right. how dare you? You know, people can't handle that shit. Uh, uh, Homer actually loves that movie. We talk about it every once in a while. How much we love happiness, and similar to how we wish we could get a copy of it for something. Criterion, get on it. I actually emailed Todd Salons about a week ago. I found his email address, and uh, he's apparently a, like a professor at some at, at NYU, and he is he knows public. And I said, "Hey, welcome I really to the Dollhouse." I said, "I love your movie, Happiness. Is there any chance we'll get a decent like uh, Blu-ray of it?" He, he never wrote back. No, of course not. He gets that all the time. I bet. Like that movie is a cult. Like, you know, that's dope. The year before I went to film school john woo taught was teaching a class man oh, i missed it by a year haunts me to this day joe it's been it's been old decades i still think about it missed it by a year i would have been taught by the great john woo what are the heart i feel like he's done more i've seen more movies from him. apparently not check out the directed because some of them are real these are all directors, you know, the written ones. I've seen yep. kids. Yeah, well, I like during war. Ken Park. He did Ken Park it. with Larry again? Damn. Y'all fucked up. No, I'm kidding. I haven't seen it. I've heard this one's infamous. This one's really? too much. Yeah, this one's too much, apparently, for some people. Oh. And I've heard oh. the, the scenes described are very borderline pornographic. Oh. And this is like I don't know. I don't know how old the actors were, but it's that's they were teen. They were teens. I, I haven't seen it. No, Ken Park and Ken Park. Oh, oh. I haven't it's, seen it, so I can't make that argument. And I have never brought it up, but I'm always like, you know, this. I wish I could like this could be the go-to of like, look, man, cuties is fine. <laughs> don't have a problem with that. Like when this shit's out there, you know, there's like was, crazy shit out there. That was a movie that triggered some people. Yeah, I know. Ran out of an awesome director. Ran her out of fucking her craft. You ever? Uh, I, I was um, I was actually with her at Sundance when she did her short film because I ended up being uh, by happenstance before Cuties. I happenstance. I ended up being her bus partner at Sundance, and that year. She won Sundance Best Short Film. So she was like, without a doubt, like a talent, you know? And Cuties was like her debut. And then she got completely ran off. I ended up seeing it with Homer. Um, but I always had a problem with that, you know? I'm kind of like, a that's one of my, probably the hottest take I have in terms of like, I could probably get some people after me or say shit about me. We well, got always, Jack in the box. Yeah, I always Jack. thought. Hello. It's oh, okay. Just chill, Jack. We love you. You're the man. <laughs> the hell? Who the hell? Who the hell is this? This is probably CGH. You dumb fucks. I always Ooh, thought else that would the. I always thought that the cuties outrage was um, not real. Uh, my my opinion of it was that it was um, unfortunately not helped by Netflix's marketing. I understand. I got yeah, major oh, yeah, right. towards that. Uh, I saw the movie. I saw it with Homer, and it is actually a pretty good movie. Uh, it has atmosphere. It does have uncom uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable sometimes, and that is sort of the point. That's sort of been the message. Um, but I thought it was a very good movie, and uh, I'm I'm kind of like saddened. Hey, no, they're back. They're in the state backstage. You you want to come in or you want to stay back? Just leave. You want to stay back? I'll leave you in, uh, back there, Jack. In a box. No, I'm I'm like kind of upset with like society. I'm like Joker moment of how they like ran this girl out of filmmaking. 
Did, did they really time. like? Did they really run? Because because my impression of it was she that never those, she does those guys. Good. But those guys on on, on all the YouTube. What I heard. Actually, I should look it up. I'm being actually very like yeah. Like my my impression of it was they needed their next thing to be outraged about because that's yeah. what they do. They do outrage clicks, and I think it's just like it, it's. I imagine them having like a, a meeting over Zoom and go, "Yo, guys, what are we gonna be? What are we gonna be outraged about this week?" Yeah. And they just find something and they're like, oh, yeah, that'll do. We can build No, something. it was like, I think it kind of, the outrage kind of got a little mainstream, quote unquote, if you will, where there was enough people jumping on it to like, well, I guess not enough to cancel it. I could be, it could, it could have just been my fucking algorithm made it seem like, I don't know. I mean, it's but, still on there, isn't it? Like, it's still on Netflix now. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, you're right. People who couldn't handle problem like that are generally projecting. I don't know. It seemed to have like a huge outrage. Like they all can be projecting. I understand being uncomfortable, but fake outrage is more. Yeah, it's like I think it's more like it, like a, a sort of a movement to jump in that is very obvious to them of like, yeah, don't do that. You know, people jump into that. Sure. So I went back to the office this week. You know, I was working night shift throughout the winter. Mm hmm. And going back into the office, um, I met all the new employees who started while I was on nights because I was on nights for four months. Mm -hmm. And this guy who sits next to me now at work, and he seems like a nice enough guy, but he says to me, I, I heard you have a podcast. Some, they told me you had a podcast. And I said, oh, I, I have a YouTube channel. And he says, what do you do? And I go, oh, I do some like movie reviews and things like that. And he's like, oh, I just started this guy, watching this guy I really like on YouTube. Have you ever heard of the critical drinker? Oh, and, and I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm like, dude, that guy's going out. Man. I'm like, that guy's fun. And he goes, Have you ever heard of Gary from Nerd Rotic? And I'm like, and I'm Hell like, yeah. I'm like, yes, I once on a stream threatened to hold him down and shave him. Stop said, it. Someday, Don't threaten people. No, I'm gonna shave him. I'm gonna hold Stop him down and shave shaving him. him. I'm okay. gonna shave. I'm gonna shave the don't, shit out of him. Don't shave him and don't shave right Eric there. July. He's don't shave. No one shave. No one. He's gonna. His face is gonna be smooth like a baby's bottom when I'm done. With I ain't shaving. You know what? There, 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 won't be, there won't be anything. Disavow. There won't be anything. That is not immaculate. There won't shave be anything. That is not immaculate. No, no, I don't want to shave you. I want to shave him. You know why? Because there won't be anything left on him. Because he's more beard than man. Senior nerd. Gary is more beard than man. Hashtag shave senior nerd. Seriously, I need razors. Hashtag save. It'll be like save when Bugs Bunny yard. got the hair clipper and trimmed oh, Gossamer yeah, and he was exactly. all hair. I'm with Beltry. Remember when it. Gossamer, remember Don't Gossamer and Looney Tunes? People. Remember Gossamer and Looney Tunes? Bugs Bunny shaved them and Don't he was nothing but hair. People, Gary, Gary's going like to be gone. That. Gary's going to be gone. It's going to be nothing but hair. People don't like to be shaved. Joe, unless they're doing it themselves. It's Friday Trust night. Me. It's Friday night tights one right it. now. Somebody go over in the chat on Friday night tights. Tell them Crazy Joe's going to shave Gary. No, he's not. And, and don't say uh, he's going to lather him up. Going to lather him up with the. Uh, if you're going to type anything into Gary's chat, and please I'm also check. Use, little I'm movie use, purple, use, disavows of that. It came from the channel. It's not about that at all. I'm going to use sensitive shaving cream. I'm going to use sensitive shaving cream. So won't hurt him. Let your hair roam free. It doesn't matter. I am not a smooth as a as an android's bottom. Any which body hair. Goes of which any any of which speaking of which let let him speak for himself. Hey hey Gary, hey Gary. Put a one in the chat if you'd like to see me shave. No, Gary. put a no. Chat. No, they're gonna do it because I said no. They're gonna fucking do it because I said no. If you guys are such sheep, sheep. One in the it. chat if you, you want to see me shave gonna, Gary. Come on guys, don't be sheep. Don't do that. You <laughs> fucking you bitches. You fuckers. Traitors. Whatever. Uh, hey, Gary. What are you doing here, Gary? He looks shaved in that picture. Make him big. Look, look oh, fuck he, off. He looks like he's shaved. I disavow all the ones. Here, I'll put two. Two. There. Combo yeah. breaker, bitches. Put a two oh, in the oh, chat oh, if you want to see me really, oh, really oh. shave him. No, stop. No, <laughs> disavow. I could... Put, I could put a three in the chat if you want to see me shave the shit out of them. I could delete comment. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I could delete comment, bitches. I did it. I don't see it my, my cup is still okay. Anything goes stream, I guess. All right, Immacul uh, Immaculation. Dude, you know what's fucking hilarious? The minute I said that, oh, 
anything go chaos dreams we could do dc star wars marvel nothing nada from none of you nothing what? oh my fucking god you guys drive me nuts you really i do. think people don't they they take it seriously I, I don't think people took it seriously they say yeah go ahead star wars let's talk about uh, disney fuck off dude i can't believe you two man you three now what fuck off one fuck off you want to see LG's shaved, the only man. guy only real one him. here it, it, no, anthony wants to see him shave too he knows no, he doesn't yeah, he does no he doesn't yep Beltry, do you want to see... Put a one in the chat if you want to see Gary get shaved and you hate Sony. No, stop. <laughs> stop it. And you hate Sony. He doesn't oh, hate Sony. Right. So, Immaculation Proclamation. No, no one I know hates Sony. Trade, Kibble Smith. I hope you know how to work on fucking cars or work on electricity or fucking paint or work construction because you're not going to have a fucking job soon, asshole. Who? Who's he talking about? Sidney Sweeney? No, he's talking about me because I'm gonna shave him. No, dude, don't. I think I think he's talking about Kevin Smith because of him. I think he's gonna sh sue you. What was he talking about? Yeah, he's like, you're not gonna have a job. This is this is a clip out right here. Crazy Joe is gonna shave Gary. No, clip he's that is not a clip out. That is a clip in. That is a clip in. No, that's not that either. I don't know what that is. That's a delete deleted scene. Not in DVDs. Sorry. Try again. When he put you know, I thought it would have been genius if for the Flash physical release, they just put in Batgirl. Fuck it. They just put that in the special features in the deleted scenes. They put the whole Batgirl movie. Every shot. Deleted scenes. What if like there, there, there was like, what if there was the Flash and then there was the Flash extended cut? And the extended cut is when he's running through the multiverse, he comes out in one universe and goes, What's Give me Batgirl. This? And then we watch the entire Batgirl movie and he goes, Cool, and then runs back. <laughs> cool. That's what happens. He says cool, and then he runs back and hits a wall. <laughs> yep. Beltry's uh, lost in 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. Gary, come back, scary Gary. You're back in, Gary. I want. I need a fourth mic, man. I'm gonna shave you, Gary. No, he's not. I'm sorry. I'm gonna hide him. I gotta hide him from Joe. <laughs> Joe, you see Immaculate yet? I have not. Why? Uh, He's saying, what's the hype? What's the hype? What's the hype? Yeah, I haven't uh, haven't seen it yet. You're gonna throughout the movie. You're gonna be like, what's the hype? What's the hype? What's the hype? What's the hype? And then and then you're gonna get to the final twenty minutes. You're like, oh, okay, I see it. I well, that's the thing. I've heard nothing but um, it's not good. Like like I've heard nobody. No, no, no. I think, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's. I oh, think really? It's, I think it's dumb fun. Like if you, I'm in, like I'm not really into like the the seventies. You know the nunsploitation, Gene Rollins, Jess Franco, like Italian horror stuff. You know, not to say they right. did nunsploitation, but like it has that kind of vibe. the The production design is beautiful. It looks like they shot it in Saltburn's house. I saw some rooms. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, hey, that hallway. <laughs> uh, but it's a, it's, it, 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 it. The visuals are really nice, very nice, and it's kind of an interesting story. And dare I say, it goes a little sci-fi, which I found very interesting for this type of movie you know and mm. i found it all right there's two there's two roots movies like this go that i i you know when it comes to this shit it's either like okay rosemary's baby type shit or they're gonna do the exorcist type shit you either do possessions or you know and it does go one way but it does an interesting twist to it okay that's all i'll say Okay. I re I kind of recommend it. I think it's I think it's trashy good fun. Yeah. Trashy good fun. And when I say trashy, I don't mean like trash garbage. Madam I White. got is is oh good I Anthony uh, Anthony Cheeseman's here. I didn't want to say it till he got here, but uh, I didn't see Immaculate because I'm not really impressed with Sydney Sweeney. Uh, yeah. Anthony complains that I say that every time she comes up. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I gotta I tell you, I'm gonna, uh, gonna see it. Sydney Sweeney Man. is actually growing on me uh, because I wasn't impressed with her in Madam Web, uh, and that's the only thing I've ever seen her in. But I've been watching her on so, a lot of talk show, like a lot of the, her talk show appearances have been popping up in my uh, like the feed, and um, she has a lot of charisma. She's a, she's a, she's a likable person. She's very likable, charismatic. Uh, not so much in that movie, uh, but um, when when you see her in a talk show setting, uh, she she's very likable. Sure. 
So I'm, uh, I'm uh, turning around on her. She's uh, she seems okay. Yeah, this is a fun movie. I give it props. Mm-hmm. What else you got? Any Marvel stupid news or anything? Uh, no, I I, want, I wanted to do a, a stream. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it because he's not going to be available. But I really wanted to do a stream with uh, Bob from uh, Organ- Organized Chaos. And okay. the reason is because he's a Star Trek fan. Um, and I kind of wanted to do this stream with a Star Trek fan. But Robert Meyer Burnett, you know, uh, Degrassi's favorite person, um, put there was a Variety article this week. Variety did a big article on the state of the Star Trek franchise, and it really set off Robert Meyer Burnett. He did a two and a half hour stream just uh, tearing apart this um, this Variety article. And I made it uh, 48 uh, minutes into his two and a half hour stream. And it was some of the most inane bullshit I've ever heard uh, because he was really making a fool of himself because uh, it's one thing to have a difference of opinion. You know, you, we can watch a show and I could say, I don't like this show. And you could say, I do like this show. Okay. That's cool. We chalk that up to a difference of opinion, but he was like doing things that were like the epitome of gatekeeping, but in his gatekeeping, he was getting it wrong. Uh, for example, at one point he, he held up a, a, a 1984 Star Trek novel called the final reflection. Uh-oh. by John Ford. And he goes getting into deep nerdum right here. And, and he go. says this 1984 novel, the final reflection by John Ford. This is one of the greatest Star Trek novels ever written. And it was written by uh, John Ford. And it's the definitive book on the Klingons. And if you want to know about the Klingons, you read this. And this is where he gets into gatekeeping. He goes, you shouldn't be allowed to write for Star Trek. If you haven't read this book. And I'm like, Really? Really, you wow. shouldn't be able to write for Star Trek if you haven't read a paperback novel that is that was until recently, and I'm going to get into this in a second, non-canonical, because novels Ooh. and comics were never considered Star Trek canon. So Ooh. this novel was not canon to Star Trek, and you're Ooh. saying he's trying to strike us. But here, oh. here, is the, here is why Rob doesn't know jack shit about what he's talking about. Why? While novels and comics are usually non-canonical, there are a couple of exceptions. Okay. And one of those exceptions yeah. was the very no- novel he was holding. Okay. The final the final reflection. Which and is? do you know do you know why that novel is canonical? Why is that canonical? Because the writers of Discovery that he despises so much oh my made God. it canon in season oh one. Oh my Discovery. God, Joe, this is breaking news. The novel, the events breaking of that novel news. are referenced <laughs> by the Klingons it, in Senior season Nerd? one of Discovery. Can you believe so he... RMB is trashing the writers who made the book he thinks is essential for the writers to read canon? <laughs> this is insanity. He was sitting there get saying, Someone get sitting there. he was sitting there saying, I get guarantee, RJ. he goes, I guarantee those writers never read this book. Send. I guarantee they made it. Canon. Gentlemen, send they out the tweets. The characters in that book in season one of Discovery, Unleashed. those writers canonized that book that you're saying never read it. So that's number one. Then Whoa. later on, he goes on um, about how Picard season Whoa. three won There's the more? Saturn. There's Picard, more, Joe? Picard season three won the Saturn award. Oh my and, god. And that was because of Terry Metallus. And they don't reference Terry Metallus or their Saturn Award win in this article. Yeah, Terry. Guess what, Rob? What happened? Star Trek Discovery won oh, no. the Saturn Award two years ago. And last oh, no. year, Strange New Worlds won the uh Saturn Award. Whoa. So you're sitting there uh oh, no. uh, jacking Got off uh, Terry uh, Metallus Whoa, for his yeah, Saturn Terry. Award. When, and, and don't get me wrong, that's a great Back show. I like, Terry. Metall- I like what Terry Metallus did on there. Yeah, I but love Terry. The other Back guys up, Terry. also won the Saturn up, Award. It, he he really made a fool of himself. Yeah, he should. Yeah. I think I think you definitely owned him, and I think you should clip it and ship it, fellas. Unleash the tweets. Mm-hmm. We got him. We got him, guys. Get him on the show. Get him on this show right now. We're gonna ask him the hard hitting oh, question. Yeah, pop culture. Favorite pop horror culture. movie. Don't be able to go and say Halloween is shine. What's your favorite horror movie that no one's ever heard of? You piece of shit. You piece of fucking shit. Yeah. I bet Mac- it's Lake. Mac Lake's a proclamation. 
Oof. What? Yeah, no, that was a beating. That was a verbal yeah, beating. I didn't have. No. I didn't understand half of it, but I was hyped. No, I, I understand it. I understand. <laughs> but I was hyped. I'm ready to go out. I'm ready. The doors open for RMB. <laughs> that sounds weird. Sounds like the the musical genre. RMB. RMB. Doors open. Uh, yeah, Immaculate's well, good. What do, you okay. want from me? I guess. <laughs> what do you want from me? No one cares. Who's seen mm. Roadhouse yet? No. I what about know. Shogun? Wow. Hey, who I, I, I just want to point out to Episode Vince. Episode 6? Vince says we had Robert Meyer Burnett on Sci-Fi Center show one night, um, but he missed the show because he had to work. I got to tell you, I did hang out with Robert Meyer Burnett once about a decade Ooh, ago in, in Los Angeles. Exposed. And I found him to be uh, very, very personable, a very delightful. generous, nice guy to hang nice. out with. Yeah. Uh, I had nothing. talking trash on the man. I Look, hey. I have not had How nothing dare good. You, Joe. Look, I had nothing but good experiences with the guy in person. Yeah, and look at you. But it, but it doesn't change it's the fact. You're searching for clout. Doesn't change the fact that he's turned into a gatekeeper online. Ooh. And um, I don't know him personally. Yeah, I don't know him one way. Grassy has, says he's known him for th for three decades and doesn't uh, have much good to say about him. Why so is maybe. why is R and B gatekeeping when he's friends with Joe? He should know that Joe does not that tolerate person, him. Joe, friends on campus, which is worse. Well, friends, well, friendly in friendly terms, not friends. Sorry, friendly. I mean, I mean, you're better than this is this is disgusting that. display of platforms. Platform. Agree, agree, Vince. Like him on campia, but it's hard to watch his solo stuff. And no, Absolutely. I did not platform Gary. Scary Gary. Because 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 Campy will challenge him if a brother say something out of line, and then he just. Oh, he doesn't himself. dare. He doesn't dare say stuff on the Campia show. He keeps his mouth shut. Oh, yeah, Campia, did, yeah. Campia tears down all his friends, like all the geeks and gamers and everyone. Campia tears them down, and Rob just sits there silently. He doesn't mm -hmm. stand up and say, hey, those guys are my friends. No, he just sits there, keeps his mouth shut, and then goes on their channel later. Yes. I, I don't know. I, I don't call understand. that busting a Ryan Cannell. <laughs> you just sit there and you take it from Zack Snyder. We're the room. I heard a door open. I heard a door. I got breaking news. A door. I thought I got breaking news. Sorry. I didn't get anything. I'm going to end the stream soon. Yeah. But let's get chaos. Last 10 minutes. Get that two hour mark. Go. What do you got? What do you got? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, the Venom is cool. Venom looks uh, good. Who's, uh, uh, who's been seeing X-Men? Who's, who's seeing X-Men 97? No, I haven't. Here's Joe. I'm not going to watch um, it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, didn't really like the original animated series. So I'm Yeah, he's not going to watch it, senior nerd. You're screwed. Uh, here you go. I'll throw, I'll throw the hand grenade into the chat. You can highlight it, and we can okay, watch the, the last the 10 minutes. Let's go. What you got to do it in the private chat? Oh, I thought you were going to highlight it. Oh, man. here. Yeah. Oh, you're boring. Dude, you guys don't give a shit. You guys don't give a shit about do this. Do something else. That's all you want. Do something else. Who gives that reference? Why? Okay. Give something, something crazy. I'm waiting for the chat to blow up, as Joe would say. You guys don't know. I have I have crafty veterans in my chat. Don't fall for that. Bull don't give a shit about this. Yeah, uh, pop counterculture is like, damn it, I was gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, see, pop, pop like, counterculture. I, I, I don't know. Grenade here. Pop, I, I don't know if you follow me on Twitter, but I uh, I started a big uh, scene to, uh, today by tweeting that out and pissing a lot of people off. How many retweets? Uh, I got the quote, ratios. I got the quote retweets that were like, "This guy's a dumbass. <laughs> this guy's real stupid." Dude, I can't believe people still fight over the Snyder stuff. Like, just everyone needs to cool it. Man, I still see it. I still see it to this day. It's crazy. You you do that too, Joe. You hit them Snyder guys. Oh yeah. 
I got blocked by Leave that, him alone, uh, Joe. Leave him I alone. I got blocked by that Aaron Fisher. I was very Leave proud him alone, of Joe. I've been blocked by Aaron Fisher. I've been blocked by Eric July. Jesus Christ. I can't I can't get blocked by Doomcock though. I think Doomcock's keeping an eye you on. You can't me. get blocked. What are you trying to do? I keep trying to get him to block me, but I keep calling him Gil. And I think he's keeping an eye on me since I know his name. I think he thinks you're his friend because you're calling him Gil. Hey, Gil, what's up, homie? Like, oh, that's my friend. I'm never going to block him. Oh, he's my friend. Hello, Chris. Hello. See, I think he's more worried that, like, I know his name. Like, how's this guy know my name? Gil. It's his own fault. I only know his name because he put it on the um, – <laughs> live stream once like down where we have our names he forgot to change his name and he came Called up the degrassi Gil gildo gaggins <laughs> degrassi yo shogun is sick though all right we got six minutes all right what else uh extraordinary is anybody watching extraordinary no go move on you always bring this up no one's watching it move well, on start Next watching it. start watching no, no it, one's man. watching it no what is it? What is it? People have a, like what you need to do, Joe. What? No, no, be quiet. What is it? What is it it's a it's a British comedy there you go. about a world where everybody has a superpower except the main character, and she's trying to figure already. out why she didn't yeah. get a superpower. He does this in every stream. Very, He's very funny. Exact same shit. Well, you should. Oh, you haven't started watching it yet. Get with no, it. No, 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 Joe. What you got to do is you got to get a funny scene. We got to get a trailer and you show everyone. I can't do that on Max. Not you're working. not going to get him demonetized. You want to watch the trailer true. here? We can do it here. You're not monetized. No, we're not doing it here. Well, there you go. You messed up. Hey. Sorry, like, have, you seen, have you seen Misfits? Yeah, I watched Misfits back no. in the day. Oh, yeah. That's almost I've like the context. Seen, I've only seen six episodes of Shogun, yeah. season eight of Game of Thrones, and Walking Dead. Well, get 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 and tonight. Ash. Go. Pop wait, wait, you don't watch that much watch television? And Darkwing Duck. Because when there's trouble, you call DW. Yeah, Darkwing Duck. Yeah. I showed yeah, my daughter. <laughs> That's a mod. This morning, I showed yeah, my yeah. daughter uh, yeah, Cartoon yeah, 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 All Stars yeah, yeah. to the Rescue. Do you remember called Cartoon All Stars to the Rescue? That sounds familiar. It was a 1992, I want to say, animated um, half hour show that aired on every single network. We're like all the Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, to beat up that smoke guy. Yeah, they teach a kid not to do drugs. It's like it's yeah, like Garfield. It's like yeah, Yo, Garfield. The, the Duck, the Duck cool. Tales, uh, Looney Tunes, the Muppet yeah. Babies, like everybody. Oh, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah. Ninja Turtles. Of <laughs> Oh God, the grass what? is going with it. Giggle. Who? Wow. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea, Pop. What if, like, let's say Ron Howard's beautiful mind just had, like, five ghosts somewhere in the background? It's like, fuck, it had nothing to do with anything. Yeah, Dude, that'd just, be... put in, just put that in a horror, like, and just and it automatically makes it a horror film, too, if you put it in, like... Yeah, you know what you gotta do? You gotta get, like, a movie like, like, a, like a Godfather or, you know, something that has nothing to do with the supernatural and just play it as written. But you have a ghost character in the background commenting, but nobody can see him or hear him. And he's just like, yeah, they never listen to me. Yeah, they can't hear me. You know, it's like he he's totally irrelevant. He's just there. <laughs> It'd be amazing, actually. I kind of like that. We should do it, and we should get Sean Penn to do it. I've got Bill Cosby talk to kids about drugs on vinyl. Sounds like a, an interesting record. Let me tell you. Here's what you do. You get here's the here's an example. You get the quaaludes. <laughs> Tell yourself the soda pops. <laughs> Joe, you're crazy, but you're reading my mind. <laughs> See, I got I kind of love that idea. I think it's amazing. There you go. I heard Steven Soderbergh's new ghost movie is pretty cool. Can't wait to see that shit. I heard shaky cam though. I heard dude, very shaky cam. Oh, Sodenberg. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, you remember that guy? Wait, do you remember the guy that said he was going to sue Matt Reeves because he believed that he stole... Yeah, I heard about that. Matt Reeves stole his idea of the... Yeah, so today the 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 the, uh, the, the case was dis dismissed in court. And he nothing. won, obviously, because he has an absolute precedent to win at all of Warner Brothers, and he owns Warner Brothers, and he's really no. He lost. He lost. He, he oh. the, the case was dismissed. Wow! Didn't was see like, that coming. 
No. Well, it's like that guy wow. who said Star Trek Discovery stole his video game. Do you remember that? This guy made a video game about a tardigrade, and it was called Tardigrades, and he's like, they stole my video game. And then he was putting out the screenshots, and other than the fact that there was a, a tardigrade, it looked nothing like Star Trek. And he's like, they're coming up with dumb ideas right now so we could say when they do it because they already put Kong with like a metal arm. So it's like, let's put Kong with some heat ray visors. I think that's my idea officially. Like yes. A Cyclops. And then, and then, uh, and then Godzilla. Kong. So when he's the next movie, if that happens, that was my idea. Ooh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pop I counter put visors on him. Heat Pop rays. To fight Metallo or whatever, Metallo. But want... what is pop counterculture? I want to know what movie he means. He says it's a shame that Jason Siegel movie about the afterlife sucks so bad. What movie? I haven't heard of this movie, and I like Jason Siegel. I'm a big fan of Jason Siegel. Well, about the afterlife. Oh. I want to see Presence. It's almost. Was that and wow. and Vince? Whatever happened to Kevin Wall this movie? Walski disappeared. He was a guest on my it's channel. Netflix once. crazy Joe. Good luck. Presence is the movie in Sundance that apparently had a lot of walkouts because apparently it gave people anxiety. It's a ghost movie and it's Steven Soderbergh's movie. So this is the official walkout from Sundance movie because it was so scary. So I'm hyped. Yeah, you are. Maybe not scary, but they said anxiety, which is weird. I don't know. Right, I, I guess movies can give me anxiety. I gotta look up Jason Siegel's filmography now. When I did um, shit, I got anxiety for some movies. What are you doing? Are you I'm watching looking... Jason Siegel movie? Jesus yeah, Christ. I'm no, no, no. no, 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 no. Okay, the movie's talking about is called The Discovery, but it's on Netflix. Yes, yeah, The it's Discovery about... Zone. Quiet. No, it's it's oh. called Discovery Crazy Joe. It's, it's on Netflix. Oh, there it is. 2017. Okay, I've never heard of this. Yeah, he's never heard of it. Good, mm. good call, Pop. It says uh, I'm, I'm going to watch it now because of uh, it's got my boy uh, the seagull in it. You're such a. Yeah, I bet he became your boy after the Muppets movie. No, nah, I think it was Freaks and Geeks. So he was your boy, and then. You hear, take me back when you hear he's doing the Muppets movie. How excited were you? Oh, I was very excited. And then it delivered. How excited were you? I was very, very, very excited. And, and yeah, I always say, it made the Muppets cool and popular again. How excited I, were you? I always say he's one of my two straight man crushes mm -hmm. um, uh, him and Sam Rockwell. <laughs> but look, right. Good I got you. my tickets. I got my tickets today. They finally announced Muppets Take the Mahoning <laughs> 2 at the Mahoning Drive In. It's two nights. I bought tickets for both nights here. Base. Night night one. Uh, I love your love for Muppets, dude. I really night one it. is going to be the Great Muppet Caper and Dark Crystal. And the second night is going to be the Muppets Most Wanted, uh, yeah. the, 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 uh, which was the sequel to Jason Siegel's The Muppets. And it's celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Did you like that, that one? I love that one. It's actually better than the Siegel movie. And then that's <laughs> being followed by Labyrinth. Oh. I love you, Joe. You love that one more than the Seagull movie? The Seagull one won an Academy Award, bro. Uh, I know, but it's, and actually the second one should have won an Oscar. Because uh, it won it won an Oscar for Best Song. Best Song, uh, man, I know. Man or Muppet. Am I a man yeah. or am I a Muppet? But the sequel actually had better songs. There's a song in the sequel called The Interrogation Song where it's um, – the guy from Modern Family and Sam Eagle interrogating the Muppets, and the whole song is them doing this interrogation. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I never saw the sequel. Oh, it's so good. It's I so love, good. I uh, love the original one. Uh, yeah. Kermit the Frog has an evil doppelganger named Constantine, the world's most dangerous frog. Constantine is so damn funny because he's trying to impersonate Kermit, but he doesn't sound anything like Kermit. So he'll come out on stage and he'll be like, It's the Muppet Show! <laughs> Oh, wow. It's really good. That sounds That's awesome. Cool. I might check it out. Have you seen the, uh, the Muppet general, Show? On... I am very sorry, senior nerd. Go ahead. No, have you seen the Muppet Show that was on ABC? That was going to be like a. It was a mockumentary. They missed Biggie yeah. Long. 
it got canceled right away. I thought it was a clever premise. It's a good show, know. too. It was a really good show. You know why it got canceled? Because the the million, what do they call them? The million moms, this like conservative organization, mm -hmm. was protesting the show. There was <laughs> because it, it's there was people... this brilliant Jack Black. Because Jack Black, I was always wondering why he never did it. There was like Jack Black was like attached to this project. It was like a spoof, it was a spoof on superhero movies, but it was like during the day, but not really. It's like a it's like a comedy, like Nutty Professor thing. It's like about during the day, Jack Black is the smartest man alive, and then during the night, he's the dumbest man alive, <laughs> and it's yeah. him dealing with that. Like so, for some reason, the sun gives him energy. I, like, I don't know why we're talking small. about Jack Black, but okay. Um, so, so why why the, the moms were against the Muppet Show? It, it really comes down to people getting outraged about things they don't understand. Yeah. Because like dogma. what do you call it? The um, Prince loved that movie and he didn't get it. The Muppet, the Muppet show, uh, like the Muppet show and the Muppet show characters were never a children's act. Uh, Sesame street was a children's show. And yes. when, um, when Jim Henson decided to take the show to prime time and said, well, I'm going to do a show with the Muppets. I heard the idea that. was that he wanted to make it more adult focused. Like, yeah. Not that kids couldn't watch it; it was still going to be like you know family friendly. But it, but the the target audience wasn't children; it was more yeah, a little bit kids. more mature. So somehow over but the it, years, what, that's what ends up. Here's the thing: what what ends up happening is that kids respond to the adult shit a little right. bit more. There's always like a little bit of an age gap of like when we yeah. were watching stuff, right? We were we we were watching stuff for the a little bit of the older like things i i loved the muppets when i was like fucking three and it was like they were doing like funny bits that like sometimes i didn't even understand but i just loved the rhythm of their like conversations and shit like that i would get into it um that's what i think sort of ends up happening they look at that and they're like oh i guess kids love it so do more for kids and they end up like going down or something yeah uh, so so what happened with the ABC series was uh, the producers said, we're going to kind of make it um, a bit, a little bit more mature, a little bit more adult. And what they were saying was they wanted to make it more like Jim Henson's original Muppet show, because over the years with Disney and everything, it had kind of slid back to the point where it was being seen as a kid's franchise, which was never the intent. And that's not what the original Muppet show was. Sure. But as soon as they announced, we're going to make it a little bit more mature. Uh, the, the, the million moms, these conserv this conservative group, immediately started protesting the show, saying, uh, Disney's trying to make a show with children's characters for adults. And um, and it blew up in the media and, and you know, people... When was this? The show. 2015. You know what ended up happening? Because they, those freaking morons... Ended up blowing that up. Someone got the idea to do. I'm gonna do Winnie the Pooh as a horror film. <laughs> but you know what's you know what's really funny? There's actually an episode of the show where they're being protested by yeah. like a million moms. Yeah. And like, there's only like three women outside, and they go, uh, "Like, who who is that?" And he's like, "Oh, the million moms are protesting us." And they go, "Like, oh, it's funny. Yeah. Looks like there's only three of them out there." <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, well, I'm gonna call it for now. This was a very chaotic. Oh, wait, I got one thing. You, 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 for some reason, you, you're about Jack Black superhero stuff. I thought he was going to bring on that. Remember, I don't crazy to know this. Jack Black was going to be Green Lantern. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy Joe, you didn't know that. Yeah, I remember that. No, you don't know that. No, no, everybody knows that. Because no, just because you're wearing a green shirt doesn't mean you knew that. No, everybody knows that. Well, nice no, shirt, well by the were, way, I think I'll take it. I think they were like, they, uh, it was legit. He was going no, I like, said, I think I'll take your shirt. I think I'll take it. I said, nice shirt. I think I'll take it. Okay. Oh, I thought it was going to send it to me. Whatever. I tried. Do you want me to send you this shirt? No, no, I'm kidding. Joe. Um, by the Say way, the show, to everyone. Say goodbye the show to my you awesome were, cat. Pop, thank you for swinging by. Can't wait the show to see you it. were talking about is called Heat Vision and Jack. It was a uh, an unsold pilot. Heat um, Vision and Jack? Yeah, the Jack Black um, sitcom that didn't get picked up where he had the super intelligence. Oh. It was um, uh, Heat Vision and Jack. And uh, it's a very they famous have a pilot. Uh, yeah, there was a pilot. Uh, it, it's, I think I it's aired it? on. I think it's a genius uh, concept. I don't know where you would see it, but, but I, I think. I'm high. 
I think it's aired on television before. Like, you know, there some cable channel used to do like something called Brilliant but Cancelled, where they would show yeah. shows that didn't make it. I yeah. But yeah, he vision John, Jack, Wu, uh, John Wu has a lost episode of Lost in Space. He did an episode of Oh, Lost I know. Yeah. He's gonna go to Seriously. the CW. Yeah. I love John Wu. I know everything about him. <laughs> All right. Say goodbye, guys. Thank you guys. Everyone check out Pop Counterculture. Does awesome shit over there. Check out Crazy Joe. Check out his awesome, what his awesome friend did with him, did for him, sorry, as a surprise. Very cool video he showed me earlier. And check out Senior Nerd here in his attempt and his his, uh, his freaking climb to get that mod status. I'm Little Movie Perp. Watch a movie. Watch two movies. Watch three movies.